Oh, hello chat. Hello, hello. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I, I, uh, I was stuck fumbling there with the thumbnail for a second because I forgot to change it. And then it was the wrong size and I had to re-export it to the right size and it was, it was a whole thing. Uh, anyway. Um, welcome back to the Andrew Cunningham streaming experience. Uh, we took a week off last week because I was on vacation. I was skiing. So we unfortunately, um, we lost some valuable air time. We'll have to make it up today. Okay, now the viewers are coming in. I, I just pinged the server now, so... We should have the crowd showing up pretty quick. I climbed, <laughs> I climbed Mount Celeste in real life. Almost. I mean, Mount Celeste is supposed to be on the west coast, I think. So, maybe there's a ski resort on that one. I don't know. The stream better be 12 hours long? Uh, I don't think it's going to be. I think we're actually pretty close to the end here. I have a suspicion that this is just a tiny bit loud. Hang on. Um... Yeah, we're actually, we, we came pretty close to everything collapsing or t getting tied up in the last stream. It's just that um, we've reached sort of the climax and now we just have to uh, tie everything up. And I think we're we're closer than it seems. What's the music? It's made for the stream. It's, it's not, it doesn't exist, I can't link it. It's a file someone gave me on Discord. Why can't I ski down a double black diamond? Because <laughs> I die? I don't know. I'm gonna go with that, because I die, probably. Release it? You'll have to talk to uh, Dr. Breeb or whoever it was who made that. I think that's their name. It's not my music to release. Um, yeah, okay, so I think I'd better, before anything else, I, I'll get the fan art out of the way, because there always seems to be some that accumulates between streams, and with two whole weeks, I imagine there's some. Here we go, it's been conveniently compiled by Blue NSL here, let's see what we got. The, uh... Was the finished version of Mooks's poster shown last time? I can't remember. It's worth showing anyway, because it's a very lovely image. Let's just pop that open. There we go. I forget if that was shown last stream, but it's, it's worth showing again in, in any case. It's a, a wonderful sort of uh, poster for the whole fanfic here. Um, although I've said that. If it were to appear in any official capacity, we would have to make modifications to censor uh, Mayor Holiday there, because that's, of course, not canon compliant. Oh, such as... <laughs> I suggested this edit. Uh, Alright, what else we got? Oh yeah, someone made a... an election... Uh, the very... The, the foundations, the beginnings of an election trucking fan game here, uh, which is hilarious. Can I show it? How do I show this? Besides, um, maybe this will work. There, if I just full screen it. You can see it's... <laughs> we have a, a lovely um, election trucking Asgore sprite here. So uh, I'm curious to see where that'll go. That's very interesting. And that one is by Uwu Macron Time, everyone's favorite. But wait, there's more. Election trucking visual novel? I guess so. I, I have no idea where that's going, but it's something. Uh. We have, oh yeah, we, we had a bunch of people attempting to draw, like, bi bi uh, biblically accurate holidays here. So here's one attempt by Mel Wife. We 
very scary, very horrifying. Um, everyone made sincere attempts to include every piece of anatomy that was mentioned so far, usually to horrific results. I said this one looks kind of like a fucked up koala because of the beak. Uh, that wasn't even the only one, though. Okay, but first, we have a, a Spamton X Spamton sketch by Neb Thing, which is a lovely interpretation. <laughs> oh, he's on the teleprompter, I see. <laughs> the wonderful mental image to have, just him, like, trawling on the wall during that scene. Ah, sweet! Eldritch horrors beyond my comprehension, says chat. My Peter Griffin impression remains terrible. Uh, oh, I didn't even see this one in its finished form. Uh, here's yet another Eldritch Holiday. This one's much worse. I don't even know quite what I'm looking at here. It sure does have pincers and pedipalves and hooves and tentacles and tusks and uh, multiple eyes, one ear, a beak, baleen probably in there somewhere. Um, I, I don't even know what's going on with its face. Uh, and Noelle's uh, headphones, of course. Oh, the baleen is on its shoulder. Yeah, it's it's gamer gamer ears because it's uh, Noelle's headset. So that's fucked up and horrible. It, that that one is actually drawn by Azathoth, the Great Sleeper, so it makes sense. That's like a family portrait for Azathoth. Uh, that's probably what like Nyarlathotep looks like. Uh, there's one more, I think. Oh yeah, it, <laughs> a Minecraft pixel art. Because of course someone made a Minecraft pixel art. Uh, this one is Rovert Clovert did this. Which technically is a... Uh, Deltarune sprites, but it's it, it, the context is what makes it. Uh, we have Grub, we have a, a startlingly well-made Tesla picture in the background. I don't even know how that was done. Very impressive though. Oh nice, we got uh, eight bucks from Wolf Sewed. Thank you, thank you. Got to make up for all the money I didn't donate last week. I know it's terrible. Um, it, I, also, I didn't stream last week, so it's not really... I, I'm not sure that math works out, but it's fine. If, if you want to pay me for doing nothing, then uh, I'm happy to receive it, but thank you very much. That may be on the... Um, I set up a new Minecraft server for the Discord server, so maybe that's on that? I, I don't even know. I, I haven't... I've literally not looked in on that since I, um, I first loaded it and checked that the world was working, so... Um, the, the last server I was more involved with, this one I'm just letting, letting it fester, completely uh, unmoderated. It's just like an an anarchy server, basically. It's great. That's me on the jetpack. <laughs> just a floating torso, like uh, John Romero in uh, Doom. I'm just a like, head on a stick, yeah. Alright, I think that's all the, the art is exhausted now. And we're good to go. Yeah, and there's a, an opium. I feel like it should be one of the red flowers, because, you know, they're, it's made of poppies, but, you know, I'll, I'll look past inaccuracies like that, because um, he cl clearly tried very hard. Alright, let me make sure I have... Yes, the fic is here. We can turn off the uh, the lovely intro music, activate lo-fi, punch it. Here we go. Outsin's a bit tired today. That's okay, I am too. We had two RAM development meetings this morning instead of one, so I had to get up extra early, which for me means, you know, like nine o'clock, but um, never mind that. Crack open a cold one. I'm, I'm going to be mainlining some tea, I'm afraid. My throat's already a bit sore. Is there going to be a new devlog soon? No, 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 no. 
Not soon, no, I'm, I'm working on another video that isn't a devlog, then after that there's going to be a new devlog, but that's going to be in the summer probably. Um, the new video is it's progressing now, I've um, I spent this entire week in like a hyper fixated fugue state just slaving away on it, um, which, which is kind of fun. Uh, I've actually stumbled into it being a collaboration now with a uh, I guess I won't reveal what channel I'm collaborating with, just in case everything falls through at the last minute, because it's still pretty early on, so I don't want to, you know, put them on the spot or anything, but um, it's it's accelerating. Things are in motion, um, and I've been developing... Uh, I think I posted it in the patron chat in the server. Um, the, the most elaborate diagram yet. <laughs> this It's a... a whole week of development time is going into this diagram, and it's going to be, like, most of the video... Uh, the footage is is going to be this, so uh, it's very. I'll show it off maybe later on in the stream. He's collaborating with me, says the Squiddy in chat. Yes, it's you. I'm collaborating with an obscure channel called Fwug Radiation. Yeah, uh, I'll say that it's no one that was on the Delta Cast, so it's um, it, it's a new face. Uh, another three bucks from Wolf Sode. Thank you. At the end, the winner has to be Toby. You mean the election? <laughs> well, we'll get there. Um, so let's let's kick it off with our customary reread. Get things in motion. That these streams go on for like I think the last stream was like an hour before we wrote anything, which is kind of fucked up. But there's so much baggage to get out of the way before we get to writing. That's just kind of how it goes. Want to be a little bit quicker this time. <laughs> it's Jaru Jaru K. It was just revealed to Outsin that I am not collaborating with him. Sorry, Outsin. R.I.P. Uh, yeah. A fugue state pun, by the way. Shout out to Remnant for the fugue state, Lamau. I get it. Nice to see one of these. I've been watching the Chrono Trigger VODs. Oh, yeah, that's, uh... I forget sometimes how many games I've streamed at this point, like like the Earthbound streams, like I I feel like I barely remember them at this point. They seem so long ago, which I guess they were a long time ago. But uh, yeah, there's actually quite a, a VOD library that's built up. Halloween Wins the Feck is somewhat canon compliant. I think we're past that point, buddy. <laughs> I think we're past that point. Uh, all right, where did we start last time? It was the debate. It was directly in the debate scene, right? Uh, up here. There it is, right here. Uh, by the way, showed us to Google Docs for having one of the stupidest properties I've ever come across, which is that um, I think last time I, I was fucking around with adding those emojis to the side. Apparently, as soon as you add a comment to a Google Doc, it is permanently and irrevocably shifted to the left to make room for the comment. Um, and if you delete the comment, it stays shifted to the left. So if I minimize this, there's this dead space over here. So the only way to restore a modicum of symmetry is to expand this thing and ex uh, zoom in a certain amount. But even then, it's not perfectly centered. So fuck you, Google Docs. That's dumb as hell. Uh, anyway, let's read. A large monster in a police uniform. Bored? Oops. <laughs> That's why you back read. There we go. A large monster in a police uniform elbowed her way through the doors of City Hall. She kept them open. After her came a disheveled human with a 0.012 football field long nose, lugging a teleprompter, and Asgore Dreamer. His bulky frame was clad in a black power suit that filled the entire doorframe. The desk clerk said nothing. There was nothing left to say. Asgore's entourage marched down the hall into the conference room. The crowd hushed at the sight of them. Kalloween stared at Asgore, uh, stared Asgore down as he mounted the stage. He stared back. Turning to face the crowd, he stood with his hands clasped and head bowed, the glaring spotlights pooling his eyes in shadow. Silence. No one in the room dared move. Licking a teleprompter? 
it, it, it does say lugging, I'm fine. As the tension became unbearable, uh, footnote 8, I don't even remember what this was, to the point where should the mayoral debate have been taking place in the dark world, Mayor Holiday would likely have accumulated enough TP to cast Tax Grave. Aha, uh -huh, very funny. Um, as the tension became unbearable, there at last came the sound, a sound from the PA system. Halloween was reaching for her mic. In an instant, Asgore erupted with motion. He thrust his arm to the side with enough force to rock the stage and plunged his hand into his lapel. A split second later, he drew out a microphone so ferociously that the entire suit burst into tatters and fell from his body. Beneath it was a second, flame-red suit littered under a flak vest, its entire surface carpeted with corporate logos. Um, I, I liked Outsin's interpretation that it was a camouflage flak vest. So I'm, g I'm gonna add that. He held the microphone outstretched for a dramatic moment and slowly brought it to his mouth. Citizens of hometown, he announced. We, he trailed off, and then spiked the microphone through his entire podium, shattering it like styrofoam. The crowd gasped as they were shattered by splinters, showered by splinters. Are at war, he finished. Stunned silence followed and his broken only broken when Jerry called from the back row. Hey, can you repeat that? It's kind of hard to hear you without the mic. Before his sentence could finish, Spamton Naruto ran across the stage and handed Asgore a new mic. I said, Asgore thundered, we are at war. The crowd now murmured fervently. Mayor Holiday tried to cut in. <laughs> Chat says, I feel like I may have missed a few developments since I, the last fan fiction, or since you last saw it. Yeah, that's a common theme. Um, you really have to keep your finger on the pulse to be left behind in the election trucking cinematic universe. Um, Mayor Holiday tried to cut in. And I suppose this war will be sponsored by Raid Shadow Crystals, she said dryly, eyeing his suit. Spamton, however, was already setting up a teleprompter in the front of the stage. If Asgore heard her, he gave no indication. My fellow monsters, he orated. The ground at our feet has been stained with blood. A heinous act of violence has been committed on our very doorstep. And I promise you this, if we do not act now, more will soon follow. The time for civil discussion and petty maneuvering has passed. Desperate times call for desperate measures, and I have invited Police Chief Undyne to explain just how desperate these times are. Seemingly from nowhere, Undyne appeared on stage with a tripod-mounted poster board and launched into her own speech. I'm Police Chief Undyne! In the last week alone, one homicide has been committed in hometown. Compared to the previous year, this is an increase of infinity percent. She jabbed a pointer toward the pie charts on the poster board so emphatically that it pierced the cardboard and became stuck. Extrapolating this data to next month, we can expect at least four people in this room to have been brutally murdered. Within a year, there will be no survivors. And according to these projections, she squinted at the teleprompter, by quintupling the budget for our boys in blue, we can reduce that time frame down to just six. Asgore quickly snatched the mic back from Undyne. What the police chief was saying, he continued, is that the spike in violent crime is doubtless driven by human drug cartels trafficking product through our town. There is no explanation for the appearance of opiate-covered human corpse in a community of monsters. This drug trafficking conspiracy also likely lies at the root of the opium crisis that has crippled our town for years. But now it's clear that these animals are not merely content to take from us the well-being of our youth. They now threaten our way of life. Every man, woman, and, he faltered, Hochi Mama, with direct violence. And in the face of such a depraved assault, we are left with but one option. A scrabbling noise from above. The crowd collectively craned their necks upward to see Spamton clinging to the wall over the stage and struggling to untie a rope around a large bundled curtain. He eventually gave up and simply speared the knot with his two-thirds Tom Cruise length nose, unfurling an enormous poster depicting an aerial view of hometown surrounded by a ring of concrete walls, which appeared to bisect Holiday's mansion. Damn it. There we go. A bold lettered slogan hung over the image. Play the line. A vote, 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 vote for the barrier is a vote for freedom. Halloween could no longer hide her, inc her incredulity. You want to build a wall? She asked, not seeming to believe the words coming out of her own beak. Asgore turned to her stoically. Yes. 
Halloween's quills bristled. They did be bounce. God, that's a stupid footnote. Build it how, Asgore? She nearly shouted. Who will build it? Who will pay for it? You expect anyone in this room to believe you can coordinate rebuilding our entire town into a military enclave when you haven't been able to stack enough brain cells end to end to pay your rent for the last eight months? She turned to address the crowd and gestured an antenna toward Asgore. Have you all forgotten who this man is? He's wearing a new suit and he's reading lines for some sleazeball and glasses, but that's still Asgore Dreamer. He can't hold a job. By rights, he shouldn't even be able to hold on to his own shop. And you're expecting him to fight a war for you. Murmuring from the crowd. From somewhere in the back, Toriel called out, He always leaves the toilet seat up too. Asgore's face betrayed no emotion. As the noise began to settle, he turned to Halloween. And whose fault is it that I cannot afford to pay rent, he said softly. Silence fell. Kalloween quickly snapped back. Your own fault, obviously. So easy for you to say, Kalloween, Asgore replied gravely. You, the richest person in hometown. You, the landlord who can sit back and leech off the wealth of the less fortunate. Not so easy. He attempted to slam his podium for emphasis, but since it was already destroyed, his fist just awkwardly bobbed midair. For the working class who keep this community afloat, he finished intrepidly. You ask who will pay for the barrier, Mayor? Why not yourself? He pivoted theatrically toward the crowd. If I am voted Mayor, he thundered, I will build the barrier, and I will make the holidays pay for it. In conjunction with our generous sponsors, Rain Shadow Crystals, Morb VPN, Raycon, Established Titles, Xylem Studios, Manscaped, Keeps Hair Loss Solutions, Sands, Mike Ditka's Big Shot Soda, and the Republic of Honduras. The crowd erupted in thunderous, if somewhat confused applause. They were cut off, however, by a screech of feedback as Kalloween tore the mic off her podium and advanced menacingly toward Asgore. Every single one of her eyes was visibly twitching. So that's how we're gonna play, she snarled. Okay, okay, Asgore, you go ahead and tell the town about how you're going to fuck me out of my money while I tell them about how you fucked my husband. The, <laughs> the crowd gasped. I forgot that line, holy shit. <laughs> Chad is having a stroke, that's good, that's working as intended. Uh, Asgore's face went ashen. His eyes darted to and from Spamton's teleprompter in desperation. Pin the document? It's in the description now. You can just go to the description. <laughs> you are open to fracking our lake, but not me fracking your husband, he shot back. It seemed he didn't quite understand what he was saying until it left his mouth, because he immediately winced. The crowd, however, went ballistic. Um, M uh, Monster Kid, who is known as MK, because I couldn't bear to actually call them Monster Kid. Um, and Snowdrake could be heard chanting, GO OFF KING! Spamton, still clinging to the ceiling, hastily made note of the latent monarchist sentiment among the hometown youth. Toriel rose from her seat quickly enough to knock over her chair and began struggling her way toward the stage. Nerdly flailed helplessly from his battle station in the back row, begging Halloween to get back on the script, but she was too far gone. <laughs> Chad is watching this while printing scientific journal articles for school. <laughs> Good, okay. <laughs> Mel is leaving the stream. This is a good time to jump ship if you're going to. Make all the puns you want, she barked. Sans already has that demographic locked down. But when you're done, why don't you explain to our fine folk, our fine townsfolk, how you can be faithful to their interests when you couldn't stay faithful to your own wife? Gaster suddenly sprinted from the back doors and shouted, Adultery sucks, yo! Before looping around the crowd and leaving the way he came in. Asgore squared off against the mayor's encroaching bulk. Well then, he said darkly, if honesty is to be the theme of today's debate, why don't you explain how I lost my job as police chief? Was it misconduct? Incompetence? Any justifiable reason whatsoever? It was misconduct, all right, Kalloween shouted. Misconduct toward me and my family. Your family, Asgore laughed. You mean the daughter whose name you can't be bothered to remember? The husband you're too busy to visit in the hospital? No, I did your family no greater disservice than you have, Kalloween. As a matter of fact, I would say I serviced your husband quite well. <laughs> the crowd's uproar became deafening. <laughs> <laughs> Toriel, who was currently being restrained by Undyne, finally knocked her unconscious with a headbutt and clambered onto the stage. Napstablick made an attempt to stop her, but was walked through without resistance and had their hat knocked off. 
Toriel proceeded to tackle Mayor Holiday to the ground. The two of them rolled to and fro, Toriel punching at Kalloween's exposed mucus membranes while the mayor tried to choke her out with tentacles. Get your appendages off my wife, Asgore shouted, before realizing his mistake, panicking, and eventually slinking off the stage in embarrassment. From the distance, he heard Snowdrake shout, Haha, I think you mean Egg's wife, Asgore, because you're her ex-husband, and, uh, eggs exist, I guess. Briefly managing to pry Toriel away from her, the mayor shouted to the back of the room, Nerdly, stop being useless and come get this farm animal off of me! Nerdly, however, began scream crying and spiked his headset into the floor. What the fuck did you just fucking say about me, you little bitch? She screamed. I'll have you know I graduated top of my class in the Navy SEALs, and I've been involved in numerous secret raids on the Frogget Mafia, and I have 300 confirmed kills. I am trained in guerrilla warfare, and I'm the top sniper in the entire U.S. Armed Forces. You are nothing to me but just another target. I will wipe you the fuck out with precision the likes of which has never been seen before on this earth. Mark my fucking- Hey, no, I'm sans face too. Every living being in the room immediately stopped what they were doing and turned toward the back doors. Chris had appeared and was holding the Majar while Noel wheeled through a heavily laden wagon containing a cardboard cut of sands, now rede redecorated to feature a gold tooth, a green top hat, YOLO shades, and a WhatsApp t-shirt. It immediately began to spout mimetic dialogue. I'm gonna have a hell of a time. Use your heelies to escape your feelies. Who invited the giant furry peanut? You made a mistake coming here and bothering me. Sick nasty tunes, bruh. Noriel st uh, Noriel. Noel struggled briefly to get her wagon's wheel over the threshold before looking up at the room before her. She dropped the wagon's handle and clapped her hands over her mouth. Chris overlooked the carnage and eventually made eye contact with their mom, who was lying on the floor with her limbs being held down by the combined efforts of the hometown police force and the parent-teacher advisory. She smiled at them. They nodded back. Nordiel for mayor. How cool's your grandma? That favorite beep of yours ain't real, buddy. I'm not rooting for you, kid. Your degenerate tendencies have gotten progressively worse over time. Faintly from the crowd, someone could be heard asking, is that a WhatsApp on his shirt? Chris and Noel exchanged a dazed look. Chris shrugged. Eventually, the two, uh, the two of them. Eventually, the two of them slowly backed out of the room. The wagon bumped slightly against the threshold strip as they left, sending Phase Two sands cut out tumbling to the ground where it broke in half with a heartrending snap. Its batteries exploded the moment later, showered in the crowd in a spray of thick, tangy red liquid. There goes the grub, it said, and was silent ever after. That was the entire last stream, was writing that one ridiculous scene. Holy shit. Oh my god. Alright, LG Satchel's here. Nice. I just I just realized actually that this has a double meaning because the the, the ketchup physically left. Uh, its body, and so there goes the grub, you know, it makes sense. The scene is great. I, I also love the scene chat. Like, the amount of chaos that it builds to is uh, really satisfactory. It's something to behold. I, I think we needed this, just complete and utter lunatic slapstick um, for a while, just to pay everything off, and then we can actually resolve the plot now that we've had this confrontation. They built a robot sans. Oh, that that was back like three streams ago. They they introduced uh, cardboard sans. Probably the most uh, popular original character from the, from the fanfic so far. Uh, okay, so and now I guess I can talk about how to wrap this up. So the plan still is, I'm still going with the plan that was suggested by chat uh, two streams ago, which is that Noel and Chris, after the failure of Cardboard Sands Phase 2, um, they essentially open a dark world to farm votes, and that's how they make Sands win, ultimately. So it's a, a big crazy uh, maneuver they pull off to rig the election, basically. We should just build the plot till it collapses under its own weight. Have you, were you here when I read this scene? Like th this is the plot collapsing under its own weight. This is exactly what the scene is supposed to articulate here. We, we can't get any more chaotic than that. 
they're disillusioned with the election. No, they're they're disillusioned, but they've decided essentially Chris and Noel are going to team up to make Sans win because th they both like hate their parents so much at this point, seeing how extreme the election's gotten. They just want to make sure that their parents both lose because it's destroying them as as people essentially. Um, uh, uh, eight bucks from Wolfsode again. Thank you very much. Um, how will the outcome of this election affect the socioeconomic problems in South Africa? Um, I don't know. Unless that's, unless that's where they're importing the opium from. I, I'm really not sure how to answer that. Maybe the seabed, uh, seabed fracking company is owned by Elon Musk. And he's from South Africa, right? So that, that could be a connection. Does Elon Musk do fracking? I feel like he must be into fracking by now. He fracks on the side. Will Obama be there? I, mm, I'm not sure. <laughs> the last seven streams were worth it for the line fracking your husband. Yeah, that was a chat suggestion, I believe. Most of the really ridiculous lines about like, you fucked my husband were, were directly from chat. And I was like, yep, that's going in. Will this go on to AO3? Yes, it will. Spamton and Asgore fight to the death. Oh, Spamton and Gaster fight to the death. Could easily happen, honestly. So the question is where to pick up after this disastrous scene. Um, I feel like we've seen a lot of Asgore's perspective recently. Um, we've seen less... We, we could either cut to Mayor Holiday, or what I'm leaning toward is that we cut to Chris and Noel, because they've sort of become the new protagonists of the fic. Uh, oh, Oatsin gave the servicing your husband line. That's That one's pretty gnarly too. That's grimy as fuck. Thanks for that, Oatsin. Um, pick up at Denny's. Yeah, we, we could have uh, Chris and while meeting at um, uh, QC's or something. Did I see your suggestion on Discord about changing when the story takes place? I did not. Um, I'm not honestly sure when it takes place myself at the moment. I was saying it was like a prequel, but that doesn't really make sense either. Hmm. Um, sp Spamton spears his nose through Gaster's heart, but his nose gets ripped off when Gaster recoils. Uh, yeah. Oh, specifically Denny's. There's a <laughs> just introduced there's a Denny's in town. If you just walk uh, left from the police station, you get to a Denny's, but it was roped off. Sure. Okay, they're meeting at a Denny's. Because we, like, um, we have to keep QCs free for Birdly and Susie to date in. Um, I also, an idea occurred to me for a scene where... Um, it, like, Chris has to leave in the middle of the night to execute their plan, uh, holding a knife. And then Toriel recreates the, um, the boss fight from Undertale, where she's like, N No, child, I know what you intend to do. I will stop you. I think that could be a funny little bit. Um, doesn't necessarily have to be a major scene, but we could use that to bring Sans back into it very briefly. We haven't seen any, uh, Sans hasn't been involved, like, at all for quite a while now, so... That could be a little bit of resolution between Sans and Chris. Sans and Tori will make out. <laughs> sure. Okay. Uh, shouldn't Tori be in jail right now? Uh, no, the, the they don't want to risk um, j jailing potential voters before the election. The police are already completely corrupt at this point, it's fine. This is your first stream, what's happening? We're, this is the end, this is the last, your, your seven streams deep, dude. <laughs> Yikes. Um, okay, so... Sans knocks out Toriel to let Chris go. I'm not sure why Sans would let Chris go, because Sans does not want to win, and Chris's goal is to make Sans win. 
but they would they would have to reach like an agreement. Maybe if Sans really is to be Chris's dad now, he has to uh, compromise <laughs> and be the mayor. Chris wins the election? Chris is not uh, a candidate currently. That would be difficult. Toriel knocks Toriel out to let Chris go. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, Chris would just- I'll accept you as my dad, only if you're the mayor. Something like that. A capsule lands on the earth containing a baby with spiked black hair and an ape tail. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah. Goku is now in the fic. Noriel knocks Chris out. <laughs> okay, this is this is silly. Uh, let's cut to Denny's. Um, do we need like an establishing shot here? Let um, what the fuck happens in a Denny's? I don't think I've ever eaten in a Denny's. Maybe once when my family went to Disneyland. We, we ate at the Denny's. It's basically just diner food, right? They have good grilled cheese. So do I. I'm not really sure why you go to a restaurant to get grilled cheese, to be honest. That's like the easiest thing to make in the universe. Meanwhile, and not meanwhile, <laughs> later that day. Um, I, I think it's funniest if I just start describing something happening at Denny's without specifically stating that they went to Denny's. Um, maybe just Chris and Noel sat across the table at Denny's. Th that, 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 that'll do. Let's just get the ball rolling here. Um, let, let's, let's integrate it into the canon here. Um, that's canonically past the police tape. Uh, it's just a Denny's. Important lore. Do not explain they are at Denny's until they leave. No, it's we, we got to establish that they're just at Denny's. Uh, I think we we would definitely just want to make that up front, you know. Noel prefers Denny's to QC's because Denny's has a tumbler. It's all coming together. Ah, yeah. Okay, that's a connection. Isn't Denny's the um the the theater kid sort of sink? where um, it's just all the, the theater kids go hang out at Denny's for some reason. I, I've heard that's a thing. Um, important lore. What what are um, Noelle and Chris's orders at Denny's? The only thing we know about literally either of them is that Chris likes chocolate. A Whopper? <laughs> Chris eats the Grand Slam. Is Noel having waffles? A Chocoberg? Is that a real thing? I have no idea. Uh, I like chocolate milk. Okay, we, we want... Chris gets waffles with chocolate milk. Would Noel like vanilla coke? These are the questions. How many angels can dance on the head of a pin? Would Noel drink coke or Pepsi? You gotta know. 
No one else just eats weed. Okay. Noel has mac and brisket skillet. Um. <laughs> Sprite Pepsi. Uh, okay, well, I'll start with Chris's waffles. I lied. We, ha we, we we cannot proceed in the sentence unless we know what Noel is eating. It's absolutely mandatory. She ordered vegetables because she's a deer. What do you think this is? Uh, bee stars? You think this is about furries? That no, that that kind of works. Eggnog. Opium. It's just a bowl of moon sugar. Dino Nuggets? Is that a real thing you can order at Denny's? Dino Nuggets? I'm gonna look that up. I don't trust you. Um, they're real. They're Dino Nuggets. Oh wait, they were taken off the menu years ago? That's their Twitter. Okay, well this is set in the arbitrary past, so they can still have Dino Nuggets. They're human shaped nuggets. <laughs> All the dino nuggets are shaped like Susie. Oh, I see. Uh, well, Chris is eating waffles, but we don't know that yet. Papyrus is in the background ordering the oatmeal. I'll, I'll if that fits, I'd, I'd, I'd do that actually. That's pretty funny. Because Papyrus is still in the closet as someone who could come out of the nowhere and be like a big reveal or, or have some role, but it's funny if he's just like a random character in the background. Papyrus doesn't eat spaghetti, you numbskulls. What are you, what are you talking about in chat? Papyrus' actual favorite food is the oatmeal with dinosaur eggs. Plan, said Chris. Papyrus is a giant floating eyeball. <laughs> that would, that's that would fit pretty well in this kind of continuity, honestly. You can't have Chris talk. Chris has already talked lots. This is um, a prequel, so Chris is not possessed. Chris is allowed to talk. You mean Prenzel? Well, yeah, Papyrus is replaced with a giant floating eyeball. Yeah, we should we should mention the original plan. Yeah, uh, let's, we'll work backward here. Noel nodded glumly. Uh, maybe Noel is apologetic because the um, the the clusterfuck AU sexy man sans was her idea.
I'm sorry, Chris. I really thought Sans Phase 2 would be a hit. Pyrus is at a table with a giant floating eyeball, maybe? <laughs> Chad is way more invested in the uh, the Prenzel lore than the actual conversation here. It's wonderful. Prenzel is the waiter. There was a lot of shipping potential. No. If... Um... What's like an old, what's the old, um, like social media site that the Spamton Sweet Steaks were parodying? Is that like Live Journal or something? Because like, like I want to say Tumblr, but like we're, it's a bit more retro than Tumblr. Is it MySpace? What is Live Journal? I, th I thought Live Journal was a thing. Um, yeah, it's, it's not my space, I think. Live journal works? All right. shrugged away her apology. Most fandom spaces migrated off of it? Well, yeah, but this is... Delta Rune's like, kind of set in the early 2000s, it seems like, so... I'm trying to keep with that, you know, aesthetic. Sans Phase 3, where he's just Michael Jackson? No, that Cardboard Sans is dead. He, he died forever last stream and it can never be brought back. That, that was his tragic... Um, chat was asking for major character death during that scene and so I killed Cardboard Sans. So their actual new plan is um, to open a dark world and farm votes from the darkness. <laughs> Um, nerdly joins Chris Noel. Oh, that, that kind of works, actually. Wait, but that would mean that, like, Nerdly would be the one to propose the Dark World? That seems goofy. Why the fuck does Nerdly know about the Dark World? That, that should be Chris's thing. Otherwise, they don't really have any role in this. Birdly appears, but Birdly's in Kisi's dating Susie right now. This is Umris canon, uh, or canon compliant at least. Nerdly is ride or die for Mayor Cal, but he had his jo he's in his Joker arc now is the thing. He he went over the whole Navy Seals copy pasta, so this would be the time for Nerdly to defect. But I just don't know if there's room for him in this kind of. Um, Goonies plan here. They've been in QCs the entire time. Yeah, it's like a, a, a time chamber. <laughs> the deep thought into the chronology is really funny. We want to keep it very consistent here. Internal consistency is of overwhelming importance. Using the Dark Worlds kills Umris cannon? There's Dark Worlds in Umris. Um, it, Susie and uh, Chris actually go into the Dark World still. It's just completely glossed over and irrelevant.
Yeah, Chris should just be like, I know another way. Be all vague about it. They shoveled a mass of whipped cream waffle slurry into their mouth and chewed pensively. Nerdly would stay with Halloween because uh, he's like a son. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> Nerdly is basically Halloween's adopted son, we decided. The player is not controlling uh, Chris right now. Chris learned about it online, what, like in the Jaru canon? They googled a bunch of like how to do magic and learned about Dark Worlds via like 4chan threads on the X board. Nerdly, the shy lesbian daughter, Halloween never had. <laughs> That's the, I don't know what the fuck that sentence means, but it's funny. Specifically mention X. Uh, I, I want to minimize the actual amount of words that Chris says, so um, I'm going to have to be real concise if I, I bring up 4chan. I saw this thing uh, on the X boy. Or, uh, they just say on X. Like, Noel would know what they mean. Or maybe Chris pulls out the pocket knife and looks at it absentmindedly and that segues into... Um, it, it's better when the characters like do actions in between talking. It's, someone said that once and it's probably true. Chris nods in Morse code. That's already Nerdly's gimmick. Uh, correct, chat. Asriel is dead in this canon. Don't worry about it. It's not plot relevant. You, Chris, I didn't know you were a chatter. I just looked the memes, I promise. Slash, slash, x slash, out loud. That's hard to say, that's like a tongue twister. Slash, x slash, slash, x slash, slash, x. Is Dio alive in this canon? Well, Dio's never really gone. No one's ever really gone. Oh god, I think that was part of my dream last night. You just you just made me remember part of my dream was like I I accidentally did a, a Mike Staclaza impression when Mike Staclaza was in the room and it was really embarrassing. I don't remember why he was in the room. It was just really embarrassing. There you go. Have you ever had that thought? Like, is that just me? It's like if you're around someone who speaks a certain way, like it's um like when I went to England. I had this like phobia of accidentally like speaking in an English accent by accident and like mimicking them. Um, th that would be so embarrassing. Like it never happened. I'm not sure why it would happen, but like I was always paranoid about that. I went to the UK. God bless. Uh, yeah, it was it was nice. Lots of. Uh, Pubs. <laughs> Lots of pub food. Um. Oh yeah, someone else in chat does that around people with accents and it's very annoying. Yeah, I imagine it would be, but I, I like naturally like mimic accents. It's just a thing that I do. Like if I'm 
like if I'm exposed to an accent for long enough, I'll naturally just try to imitate it like in the shower or something. Um, so it could creep into like conversation potentially. But you speak in an English accent because you were born in England. That, that's different. Okay. I think you have an excuse. That's empathy. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Uh, and people, like, pick up accents if they live somewhere long enough, right? Like, if people can just adopt the local parlance. So I guess it's a natural phenomena. Anyway. Here's where we reference uh, Prinzel. Uh, let's mention that it sets sunset, because I think sunset at Denny's is a very specific aesthetic it's like the um the diner scene in that the one david lynch movie that really doesn't narrow it down does it <laughs> the, the one where the guy is like i i can see it through the wall it's the most terrifying face i've ever seen that aesthetic Um, there, there's probably some really elegant way to write that into the scene about how the light's playing across that, huh? Oatsen doesn't even know where his own accent is from. That's interesting. Oh. Oh, yeah, people in your own town ask about your accent. Yeah, that's, that's peculiar. I think I've mentioned that before, is that when I worked at McDonald's, um, people would like several times not consistently but like at least three times someone asked if i was from ireland like they thought i had an irish accent and i, I have no idea like my granddad was irish i guess but like he, he didn't have a very strong accent even so i don't know Papyrus is shower uh, showered in um, golden light. Yeah. You, you you can hear it now. What you're hallucinating my Irish accent. Top of the morning, laddies. God, that sucked. I'm sorry about that. Top of the morning, fellow game devers. Uh, okay, they let their eyes scan across the sparsely populated tables. Golden light lancing through the windows. <laughs> that wasn't even intentional, I swear. We need a footnote. Just keep beating the dead horse until it's, like, ironically funny again.
Silhouette is English for Umaris, yeah. Um, I guess I have to mention Prenzel. That's implicitly kind of funny. A giant monochrome eyeball sitting in the far corner briefly made eye contact before glancing away awkwardly. We have Chris, a character with no visible eyes, making eye contact with a character who is just a giant eye. <laughs> That's funny to me for some reason. Oh, oh, chat says Prunzel glares at Chris because of the anti-human sentiment. Oh my god. <laughs> Do, just cram in that little bit of world building? I kind of like it. Uh, is there a way to mention... To make it clear it's because of anti-human sentiment, not awkwardly. I'm not sure how to shoehorn that in. Uh, how can the giant eye glare? I, I'm not sure, actually. Awkwardly embarrassed at its own prejudice. <laughs> it's like internalized racism or something. I, I don't know what you call it. There's probably some, um, some term under like critical race theory for exactly the psychology undergoing here, but embarrassed by its own prejudice. That's such an Undertale line of dialogue. That's like a fucking uh, like you get if you checked on the Washua. A bead of sweat rolled down its cheek somehow. It would be its eye. That's that's a cursed thought. I'm not crying. My eyes are sweaty. Um. Ever since Asgore's speech, Chris noticed monsters staring at them more often. That's a much better way of um. Maybe we can just keep both. Let's just keep both. Why not? Working out, building his eye muscles for gaming. <laughs> it's a good thing Chris is the only human in town or monsters wouldn't know what humans look like. <laughs> they think most monsters assume they're a weird dog. <laughs> Um, oh yeah, I referred to, uh, Prenzel's supposed to be Papyrus, right? A bit weird to use its for no reason there. Don't want to objectify the floating eyeball.
Uh, they absentmindedly fish their pocket knife from their pocket. Oh, that's awkward. It's obviously a pocket knife goes in a pocket. Fished out. Their pocket knife. Is Chris cool and knows how to spin the knife between their fingers? That's like a very a anime protagonist thing. How would the giant eyeball eat anyway? You're asking the wrong questions. I'm not sure what the right questions are. But maybe it's the pupil. Maybe Chris is doing the thing where, like, you, you jab the dagger between your fingers really fast. I don't think they let you do that at Denny's. Like, they get mad at you, probably. Yeah, Chris absolutely looks like the anime protect. Okay. I was tempted to say hentai protagonist, but that's a little bit, that's a bit much. Uh, Noel is shocked and appalled at this brandishing of a weapon. Are Halloween and Prenzel friends? Uh, I have no idea. Uh, eyeballs, or the look the eye of Cthulhu and Terraria. The the entire cornea just pops off, and there's a mouth underneath. Terrifying. <laughs> Halloween Prenzel ship. Two characters that aren't in the game, and yet they are shipped together. Well, I guess Halloween could be. Halloween is specifically canon compliant. Noelle's into the scary shit. Yeah, but she'd also be like, Chris, they're gonna kick us out of the Denny's. Actually, I think that's exactly what she should say. Uh, five bucks from Algae Satchel. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Noelle then asks why Chris has water in their pocket. What's the joke? Why does Chris have water in their pocket? I don't- I don't get the joke. I'm trying so hard, I don't get it, I'm sorry. Oh, fished out. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, it, it's- it's a- a common enough figure of speech, I think it doesn't- Uh, it doesn't warrant lampshading. Oh, the EOC stands for Eye of Halloween. Chris is wielding a dirk? Oh, that's fucking... That's cursed. Ultra kill size two fish. I haven't looked at that. I don't even know how to get to the fishing minigame. Um, I briefly... I booted up ultra kill yesterday. Just till I, I had some enthusiasm. But, um... I kind of suck at the game, to be honest. Like, um... I've P-ranked up to the end of Limbo, I guess, but when I tried um, uh, on Lust, I couldn't really get past A-rank in, in several tries, and I just kind of gave up. So, no Prime Souls for me for the time being. Chris has a Wakizashi made of authentic Nippon steel. <laughs> I think it's a butterfly knife, if anything. P rank? Is that the Pizza Tower reference? Yep. It stands for pizza. Cool. 
Claire de Lune by Debussy. That really is the best name of all time. It's French for uh, of Bussy. P stands for pure ultra killing. Yeah. It stands for pepperoni, pepino. Yeah, cause it really, there's many, many layers. PP rank. <laughs> it stands for P. Okay, uh, I have to continue. Um, do I do the annoying thing where I type out a stutter? Noelle stutters a bit, right? I feel like she stutters a bit. Type out six Ks. <laughs> no, I think you want to keep it under three Ks for legal reasons. Would Chris be a spy main? Uh, I'm not really familiar with the TF2 neurotypes or whatever. When I played TF2, um, I, I think I sucked too badly at it to really main a class, like I just tried a few games and abandoned it forever immediately. I remember playing Demo Man for a little while. Uh, I think I tried Sniper. Maybe Scout. Chris is Demo Knight, apparently. Focus, okay. Switch your weapons every kill for P ranks. But my fingers, they don't do that. All the weapon switch buttons are above the movement buttons. So like, how do you press them at the same time? Uh, I always fumble trying to switch weapons. Thirty nine point nine Ks. Let's do four hundred and one Ks. That, that's great, right? That's what you wanted? She's talking like the clam NPC from Waterfall. Alright, yeah, I gotta get a move on here. Okay, this has to segue immediately into like... Let's make a dark world. You think Chris can show it off non-verbally? By like, making a little tiny amount of darkness come out? Like if they just, they just tap it into the table and like a little, like a f little wet fart of darkness just goes Let, Let's canonize that as a thing that works, yeah? Oh yeah, the, yeah. We, we've decided that Chris learned it on X, so yeah, okay, and then Noelle asks, Chris, how did you do that? And then Chris is like, I saw it on X. There we go. He demonstrates by stabbing our, uh, they demonstrate by stabbing the syrup bottle. And that's how Ralsei was born. Ralsei is a plate of Denny's waffles. <laughs> Why the fuck? That's kind of funny. It makes no sense. It make it makes no sense at all. No, we we can't bring Ralsei into this. That's that's too dumb. That that's too much to explain. Oh, Chris stabs a Dino Nugget.
bring Rousey in. Fine. Okay, I'll bring Rousey in as a, a pure shit post, and um, and he'll be like Asriel's dust, and it'll never be mentioned again. Wait, but no, that if if we if Rousey is like a, a plate of waffles, then how does? I was kind of relying on the idea that Chris would already know Rousey somehow, and and they could just be like. Hey, Ralsei, I need to forge some uh, votes for the election. And Ralsei would just do that. Or I guess no, that doesn't make sense, because Ralsei wouldn't have the castle town yet anyway, so... It doesn't matter. Yeah, sure. Ralsei just gets born, but they don't know this. What? Kyle McMillan donated $2.79 to ask to make Chris's middle name Moisture. <laughs> what the fuck? How do I even indicate that? I'd gladly do that, but I'm just not sure how. Unless Chris is like signing their name on a ballot because minors can vote for some reason. I don't know. You don't write your name on a voting ballot either. That's completely against the point, so... <laughs> Chris Moisture Dreamer. Oh yeah, Toriel. Okay, Toriel can use it. That 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 makes sense. Okay. Chris puts Asriel's dust on the waffles. No, like no explanation. Ralsei has no relation to Asriel whatsoever. He is just waffles. Or actually, no, the Dino Nugget. That was funnier. Orbit through Chris's fingers. That seems janky. Call it a circuit. Uh, another five dollars from Algae Satchel. Thank you very much. Uh, what if they go to Chris's room and Noel opens a closet and hundreds and hundreds of knives tumble out? That would be in character. Uh, I'm not sure if how how is this gonna work. So like, Chris and Noel are going to. Noel needs some role in this plan, I guess. Uh, actually, maybe that we're gonna have a scene next where Chris leaves in the middle of the night to do the plan, so we we can fit Chris's knife closet in there. I think. I think that'll be a that could be a gag. Let, let's say that's gonna happen. Okay. Make Rousey Canadian, cause maple syrup. What, and write it in Canadian English like I've already been doing for every character? <laughs> A another $2.79 to specify. One of the knives is indented with the word moist. <laughs> is that a thing? You get your middle name engraved on your knife collection? What's what's Gabe Newell's middle name? Does he have that on, uh, on those like kukris and karambits? Thank you for the donation though. Uh, oh yeah, okay, that's good. That's good. Thank you. Get back on track. Noel says that the only reasonable way to win was to get more votes out of nowhere. Um. Okay, I I think I have it. I've got it.
that's a term, right? I, th I saw that on TV tropes or something. Slasher grin. The knife abruptly halted its circuit through Chris's fingers, but Noelle instead found her eyes drawn upward to the slasher grin spread across the human's face. Thought of a new plan, Chris said. Uh, now Noel does the line. Chris's Joker arc. That's not Joker. That's just Chris arc. Chris does the exact same thing at the end of chapter one. <clears throat> What? Noel stammered. Um, <clears throat> For else he jumps out the window when he appears. He jumps out like papyrus. Kind of funny, actually. Chris is their middle name. Moisture is their first. <laughs> That's a good reason to go by your middle name. God, that suck. Moisture Dreamer. Uh, Darkners can't get to the overworld. No, it's not the case of getting the votes from the Dark World. It's that they put the entire election or the polling facility into the dark world so that anyone who enters has to vote along with the darkeners. That's how it works. Talk about a wet dream, says chat, for no apparent reason. Thank you. Oh, moisture. Oh, <laughs> wet dreamer. I get it. I get it. <laughs> Can we get short scenes with the other candidates, asks Outsin. Uh, yeah, that that's on the table, I think, just to keep everything straight. Oh, in between the scenes? Oh, um, maybe... Maybe? I'm not sure about that. Let that incubate. Like, very short. I wonder if that would work. I'll think about that. <laughs> the cutout broke is like that was the entirety of Sansa's campaign was linked back to this fucking cardboard cutout and now that it's broken the, his power is gone it's like the one ring
Asgore found a human in the rain and decided to adopt them. And since that day, they named them Moisture. Because of the rain. It's like a Hideo Kojima nomenclature. And because I was wet that day, I was called Moisture Man. Oh yeah, we could, uh, that's true, we could play with all the, um, the Lightners getting Dark World redesigns. That's funny. Like in the Dark World, Mayor Holiday just looks like a, an anthropomorphic reindeer. <laughs> Die hard them. <laughs> Moist crystal. Uh, seven bucks from Kyle McMillan. Thank you. Uh, Chris drops moisturizing cream, resulting in that ice wolf thing's death. It's very sad. Luckily, the cream survives. Also, Papyrus likes Element 21 Scandium. What? I have to unpack this. Why does the moisturizing cream kill Ice Wolf? I'm not sure why that would... Uh, I'm a fan of Scandium, like anyone else. Um, I recall nothing about its elemental properties. In fact, if you asked me out of context, I probably would have guessed that it was a lanthanide or some bullshit. Um, but... Is that one of the ones by, like, Vanadium or something? The, those, like, weird early, uh, metals? You have two grams of Scandium in your periodic table collection. Well, I'll be impressed when you tell me about your two grams of, uh, Francium, if you know what I mean. <laughs> It has dendrites when pure, which looks like how wood looks. It's got some some xylem in it. That sounds cool. Am I speaking English? I'm talking about scandium. <laughs> when Spamton touches scandium, it turns into scamdium. That's canon. It just never will come up. There's no possible scenario when that would be relevant. But it is a superpower. Anyway, enough periodic table lore. Um, although I did used to be very into the periodic table uh, back in the day. The only way Sans could win now would be to create boats out of thin air. It, it it's a bit heavy-handed, but who cares? Chris continued to smile and flicked open the knife. Noelle jumped slightly despite herself.
Ooh, near miss. All right. Chris Slade lifted the blade across the table and held it delicately over Noelle's nuggies. Waffles is funnier than dino nuggets, but Noelle was already established as eating dino nuggets. Chris is the one eating the waffles. Chat ships sodium and potassium. They are um, chemi chemically similar, I suppose. <laughs> sodium X chlorine is a very salty ship. Fuck off. The knife is made of scandium. Uh, that that can be for the the closet gag. You, you did donate another two dollars and seventy nine cents to say that. I'm not sure what drives you, but thank you. Uh, why is this in quotes? Hang on. No quotes there. Here we go. The Interrobang after ellipses combo. Extreme Noel punctuation. Um, Chris? She squeaked. Footnote, footnote, suddenly, with the precision of a surgeon. Uh, da, 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 Wait, was there a... No. Um. A, five bucks from Algae Satchel? All right. Uh, thank you. Today I learned there's a chemical named... Coming... Coming tonight? No joke. I bet there is. Uh, there could easily be like a protein named that. I mean, people, there people name uh, stuff after basically whatever they want, in fields where there's a lot of shit to name. Like there's a type of um, microbial phage named Minos Prime, I believe, because uh, you can just propose whatever the fuck you want, and no one really cares. Um, there's there's a Pikachu in, I think. I fell for it. I mean, it. What is there to fall for? It's not like a ligma where it's hidden. It's just the, it's coming tonight. Like it, it's kind of just right there. I think I knew what I was getting into. Yes, the, the gene called Sonic the Hedgehog. It's like oh, there's a chemical called Big Dick and Balls. Got him. It's like, what do you mean? I can feel it coming in the air tonight. Oh lord. There you go. Footnote in parentheses, that's pretty advanced. Does the comma go after the footnote? No, probably not.
Triss thrust the blade downward and embedded its very tip into the crispy shell of a dino nugget. Um, actually knife, blade, alternate, for greater variety. Cut the scene in dramatic declaration. Yeah, that, that could work. I agree, Otsin. Like, we could end it on a... I saw it on X. Nuggies have shells. Yeah. What else do you call it? You have the batter and then chicken paste or whatever. Skin? Well, no, you take the skin off the chicken. I can't really, in good conscience, call deep fried batter a skin. Crispy shell is funny, okay? I'll, I'll broke no discussion on this matter. Is it broke? Brook? I forget. Who cares? So this implies, by the way, that depending on, I don't know, the, the flick of your wrist, you can either generate Undertale Determination or Delta Rune Determination by stabbing pointy objects into things in this cannon. Because earlier in the fic, uh, Gaster's arm was reattached by stabbing it in, in exactly the same way. And it did not make a dark fountain. So who knows? Uh... Um, I guess this is where Ralsei would appear. Actually, Ralsei? Ralsei could be like a post credit scene. Like, like we just leave this kind of in limbo, and then after the entire fic ends, we cut back to just the Denny's, and the, and the plate of chicken nuggets is still sitting there f for some fucking reason, and Ralsei just pops out of it and dives through the window. Maybe that's that's how it ends. It's brilliant. Like an event. Yeah, it's the post credits uh, Avengers um, MCU thing. Well, that just happened. Ralsei says, and Morbs out of the window. Uh, actually, no. Morbius is DC, isn't he? Oh. Well. Could I read the story so far? Uh, I read it at the beginning of the stream, and I'm not going to again because it takes forever. Um, reading the entire story would take several hours at this point. Morbius is Marvel? Is it? Oh, I, I assumed it was DC because of how miserable and edgy it looked. I haven't actually watched a Marvel film since Endgame. Hmm. How long is the story? It's, uh... 14k words? It's pretty long. Up to 45 pages. I've never watched a Spider-Man film. Not even the old ones. Never. I'm not a Spider-Man fan at all, apparently. Bar 13, just a week away, says chat. Yeah, we're getting there. It's unclear whether Noel knows what this means yet, but it's okay. Chris can explain off screen. It's 
stutter abuse. Just spam the stutter, who cares? Toby Fox does it, I can too. Be shispered. Slide on X. Scene over. Okay. <laughs> Christmases? Ew. <laughs> I don't like it. Jinkies. <laughs> Jinkies, Chris. Ralsei lectures the reader at the end, like Ralsei just gets together with Gaster and they read you a Bible story. Anyway. Uh, okay, Outsin was talking about having a brief catch-up with the other characters. Um, so I'm trying to think whether they, were, if they would go here or whether they would go... Um, here. I'm not sure. I think keeping- I like this transition here because it goes from Chris and Noel to the aftermath of Chris and Noel. I think that's the most natural way to do it. But afterward, we could quickly catch up with the other two. I think that's where we, where we do it. The rest of the thick is gassed are reading the entire King James Bible. That's one way to get your word count up. Like, it's one of those fanfics that keeps getting chapters added for, like, years, and it's 500,000 words long. But then you look into it, and every chapter past, like, the the tenth one is just the Bible being uploaded on a weekly basis. Actually, I think I can upgrade this dialogue here, just a bit. Just a bit better, okay. I'm confused, who's Velma? Velma's not in the scene, don't worry about it. How many words? 14,000. We're officially into super umorous territory. Okay, enough Bible lore and chat. We gotta have a new scene here, very briefly. Actually, would this be better? Um, I think the best thing to do, we have to set up that, like, this is um, the 11th hour. Like, the election is tomorrow. It's like Christmas Eve or some shit, you know? Like... Everyone is sitting at their, their bases, like, scanning the popularity polls and, like, pacing back and forth and smoking cigars, whatever the fuck politicians do. Um, and and uh, Noel and Chris just kind of get to work at the last minute here. Election Eve. That's good. Have the ballot place being set up? Yeah, I guess I should establish where the voting is held. Uh, which is a good question. I guess it's City Hall? I mean, in my experience, they're always at um, schools for some reason. But if there's already a City Hall right in town, maybe that's where they'd have it? Or maybe at the church? Churches are often used for those kind of multi-purpose events like that. 
Yeah, let's make it the church, because then we, we can get our church dark world. Cal and Crudley together in Cal's living room. Crudley's just crying. Okay, that, that's a good one, actually. Outsin, you, you're getting us back on the rails here. That's good, 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 good. I <laughs> like the, the mental image of just... Uh, Nerdly is literally just like lying with his head in Halloween's lap, sobbing. <laughs> Uh, the school is better. It's a change of setting, I get Yeah, that's true. Didn't they break up? They're not dating. Noelle is standing five feet away. <laughs> or, uh... Actually, no, uh, Noelle can still be at Denny's here. Uh, we don't have to include Noelle being more miserable. We we've had enough of that. The church is climactic. Uh, well, chat can think about that for a sec here. You think Halloween <laughs> uh, is open? Just like opened a bottle of whiskey. <laughs> It's, it's, it's gotten to that point where they're just, like, fucking done. Shit, it auto-corrected to Halloween. Another 279 from Kyle McMillan, thank you. Noelle loses her Scandium Metal Pizza. What what's with the pizza? What's with the pizza, dude? Where's the pizza? I don't get it, dude. I don't get it. You have to like the scandium was established, but where's the pizza come from, man? I don't know. <laughs> the election is held at the bunker. Jeez. While Nerdly is crying, he says, I'm sorry, mommy. Um, I, I'm not going to include the line, you're the lesbian daughter I never had. That, That's too stupid. Literally, even for this, even for this fic, that is too stupid. Do a poll on where it should be, says Algie Satchel, for $2. Thank you. Uh, yeah, why not? Let's do a poll. Let's make it democratic. Engage with your audience. Start the poll. Okay. All right. Poll has been sent. Dining room, one word? No. Uh, I need to really. Well, what was the brand of um, of alcohol they were drinking in Umris? It was something really specific. Nerdly crying. He couldn't believe it. His life's work. The dream of downtown revitalization and upzoning funded by an increase in sales tax was over. <laughs> I'm copy-pasting that. That's gold. 
Uh, what's winning the poll, by the way? Wait, how do I even... The poll is like minimized itself. Oh, the bunker is winning by a landslide, really? All right. I guess they're voting at the fucking bunker for some reason. It doesn't really matter. Seriously, though, what was the Umris? It was like... Chavez or something. Uh, something vaguely French sounding. Uh, can I? I need to pull up Umris somehow. I don't even know how to pull up Umris. Where's my Umris? Oh, Shiva, that's it. That's it. What the fuck is that? It is... It's Scotch. Perfect. Very cultured. Very, uh, John Draper or whatever. Oh no, not a bottle. It's, it's, uh, they're bougie. So it's a decanter. Uh, a decanter of Shivas, I didn't cork that her side. Um. Wait, the copy pasta. I lost the copy pasta. <laughs> or something similarly wonkish. <laughs> that's, that's, an, that's an adjective. I don't even know what it means. Uh, okay. Uh... Set. Um. Does that work? On the floor beside her, Nerdly sat hugging his legs to his chest and weeping uncontrollably. He couldn't believe it. His life's work, the dream of downtown revitalization and upzoning funded by an increase in sales tax, was over. <laughs> you feel so bad for Nerdly. N Nerdly is, is the junior, like, campaign staffer, right? Some some title like that, so it, it sort of implied he's like in high school or something. Like he's not even being paid for this. Why did Chris get scared at the bunker? Uh, maybe, maybe they saw an opium deal. Opium pants burst out of it. Do not put nerdly on the trauma spectrum. Don't do that. Oh, I'm going to just keep upgrading the sentence a little bit.
One of her tentacles was coiled loosely around a decanter of Shiva. You were sure last stream, but still don't know what a nerdly is. Uh, nerdly is birdly but red and has heterochromia, but both colors of the heterochromia are different shades of brown. That's nerdly. Um, he's a perfectly original character. Um, that's it. That's nerdly. He's implied. It was implied that he's mute, but he's actually not. He just was speaking in sign language most of the time because he thought it was cool or something. Um... Actually, let, let's keep, um, let's do a Holiday's little reaction, the Nerdly's reaction sequentially, and then Nerdly has the one line, and then scene in. That'll work. Uh, so Holiday has to see that her, the poles are a toss-up. Uh, we have a chance for one last, uh... Halloween anatomy in insertion here. She doesn't have flippers yet. That's new. No, she already has antenna. I, I want to say like she she flipped the screen down in, in disgust, so it's got to be like a limb. A wing could work. She doesn't have wings yet. I'm mean, it's not a cloaca. Bad chat. Uh, maybe like a one wing. She she's literally a one winged angel. Sure, I'll just canonize that real quick. Uh, what's the term? The polls? The, uh... What the fuck do you call it? The preliminary? The predictions? There must be a term for this. Isn't the ballot just the vote? I'll say the ballot was a toss-up and wait for Outsin to correct me. The ballot was a toss-up and there was nothing left to do about it. Where are Birdly? I specified they're at the dining room table. There. Actually no, it's it's funnier if they're they're on like her couch. Like a leather couch. Thank you. 
projections. The projections were a toss-up, maybe? Probably good enough. Is an article missing? Oh yeah. There it is. What the fuck was the line about, like, mommy? I want to scroll up and find that. Behind all the uh, the voting, though, in the poll. <laughs> You're like a son to me. <laughs> Someone said a line about, like, Nerdly calls her mommy, and I can't find it now. Oh, I I'm sorry, mommy. <laughs> Wait, one of, uh, Remnant says there's a Cunningham running for school board, and, uh, one of my family's areas running for sheriff. Uh, why is my far distant family invading my life? I don't know, I'm sorry about that. Uh, I can't really- I, I have family in the South United States, but, uh, none of them are Cunninghams. That's my mom's family. You're the kid I never had? Or the child? Yes, son I've always wanted doesn't really- because that's like- she's legitimately never had a son. The joke is that she's a, forgetting she actually has a, a daughter. I'm sorry, mommy is Kurt. It really it reminds me of that. Um, does anyone know Amon Animations? That he does like those political shit posts. Uh, I was thinking of uh, J Joe Biden's uh, America's new mommy and daddy, and then everyone starts default dancing or something. <laughs> uh, very specific recollection. I'm sorry. Uh, do we just cut the scene right there? <laughs> she just says daughter. <laughs> That's actually really funny. Yeah. Lesbian daughter is a bit too much, but... Daughter is just like, what, is, what the fuck?
Nerdly uses she, her for the rest of the fit. <laughs> and tucks him into bed. <laughs> Halloween's words break the logic of reality and travel far enough that Noel hears it in the diner. Yeah, we I said we don't need any more Noel torture in the fic. It's it's excessive. I don't know if we need like does the scene just end there? It, it it's kind of it kind of works if you just end it. It's awful. Has Asgore killed anyone yet? No, but he's um he's helped Spamton cover up a murder by butchering a corpse and uh, covering it in chicken wire. So he's an accomplice to murder. Oh yeah. She kisses his forehead. I like that actually, because she can do that while still sitting on the couch. Wonderful. Now it's creepy. <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, Spamton shoots the body. I mean, no, Asgore didn't run the body over. Spamton both ran the body over and then um, executed Varak when he looked like he still might be alive because it was easier to deal with... Um, cover up a murder than to have Varek sue them. <laughs> As a thoughts was at a party, what happened? I showed off your fan art of uh, Halloween in the start of the stream. That was cool. Halloween has lips now. Uh, well, you know, kissing is kind of an abstract concept. Um, I mean, Nerdly has a beak, presumably, so how does that work? That's a grown-up kiss. Uh, is that is that Makima or something? Oh no, that that's um fucking what's her name Misato and Evangelion. God, how it's weird that I can get those two mixed up. <laughs> weird that there's a common dynamic there. Jeez. Oh, maybe Noelle is just like walking back to her bedroom and ignores them both. <laughs> okay, that's that's how Noelle gets put in the scene here. Or, no, I kind of don't want to do that. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how Noelle fits into this. Let's just move on. These are supposed to be really short scenes. Um, what is Asgore doing at this juncture? Asgore is just kind of like sitting miserably in his flower shop, thinking about what he's done, I guess. Does Cal have a uh, canon color palette? No. <laughs> Are you? Why? Why would she have? She doesn't have canon anything. Um. Let alone a color palette. 
Asgore servicing Rudy. No, not that. Um, Asgore could be visiting Rudy. That would that would kind of turn into a longer scene, though. I think. I'm kind of sick of dwelling on Asgore's POV. Is kind of. Theor it kind of seems like he should have a big climactic scene where he like thinks about shit, but maybe that could be after the um, Chris and Noel's plan comes to fruition. We can pan past the hospital. How do we do that in a book? I don't have a camera. Uh. Oh, the campaigns. Oh, yeah. Uh, Outson really. He wanted Spamton to be really concerned about Asgore admitting that he was gay. <laughs> And no one else but him understanding why it was a big deal. Yeah. Oh, the diegetic jetpack narrator has the camera. Okay. <laughs> no, I, the, the narrator's only funny if it's only mentioned once. Double dipping would ruin it, I think. Okay, what do we do now? I, I kind of like the uh, the, the spam tin is like we, we have to make sure the media understands that you're not gay <laughs> that's funny to me spam villas cannon Sure, yeah. That doesn't mean Spamton's not himself gay. Whatever, Sp yeah. That's not uh, against the canon. Asgore's a pan icon, more like a panopticon, considering he's trying to run a police state. Am I right? <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> Have spammed and promote RAM for three pages straight. <laughs> I could diegetically put in a, an ad for RAM because uh, Asgore is sponsored by Xylem Studios. I, c I could literally just insert uh, an ad for my own game studio into the, the fan fiction and no one could. God, that's what a tempting idea. Anyway. So we have to just cut right to Spamton. Cut right to Spamton's dialogue. Would that make you feel... I'm not actually going to do it, don't worry. <laughs> I'm not actually doing that. I could, though. That's the important part. Put the actual link to the Steam page. Uh... I think uh I'm not sure. I'm not I'm not sure what kind of um brand optics that would that would create. Who the hell is Halloween? <laughs> you know, Mayor Holiday. Mayor C Holiday. Everyone's favorite person. Okay, Spamton has to start talking here. He's like, there's still time for a media interview. We need to get you on to Joe Rogan now! Uh... What, I've actually been stalling because Spamton's called Asgore by a different name every time so far and I can't think of a new one.
calls him Heisenberg. <laughs> That's kind of funny, actually. Heisenberg. <laughs> I think I'm doing it. We can fix this! You're gonna miss this series, Azathoth? I am too, but you know, all good things must come to an end before... Eventually I get exhausted by doing this, so... It, I, I don't have it in me to write like the, the 300,000 word long infinific that some people seem to do. Like, I don't know how, how the fuck you do that, man. That's ridiculous. Chris versus Spamton needs to happen. Oh, that, that could be a good, like, final, final boss fight. Is, is Chris and Noel have to, like, Engage in strife with Spamton on the street. That's right, the, the, the light world combat system in Delta Rune is strife. I just I guess made that canon. Chris and Spamton? No, they're Chris is trying to get Sans in. Where are Asgore and S are they just sitting in his, like, miserable hovel? Do they have another table in Denny's? <laughs> right? <laughs> Everyone's just at Denny's. Um, replace Joe Rogan with Jogi Rogi, but Joe Rogan is already a joke. Ma making it like a double joke would make it less funny. Um, they're at QC's. Oh wait, but Asgore still doesn't have any money. They, they, he has a campaign staff, but still literally no- Oh no, he got sponsorships though. He's, he's rolling in it now, okay. It's a different Denny's across the street. <laughs> Alright, that's canon. What if Asgore's are trying to do like a the crossword in the newspaper or something? Screaming homunculus. Uh, 
Uh, there we go. Asgore pinched the bridge of his nose, trying to concentrate on the newspaper crossword puzzle. Um, that's, that seems a bit awkward. Factor the sentence. Yes. Focus on the newspaper. Yes. Sentence refactoring. A lot, a lot of brain power. I'm sorry. I can't give commentary while sentence refactoring. Asgore pins the bridge of his nose, trying to tune up the screaming homunculus sitting across from him, and focus on the newspaper crossword puzzle he'd been he'd started that morning. Um. They were sitting... Um, in a booth at the other Denny's. Robinton, we have been over this. I just don't see the cause for concern here. Do I have an opinion on the legends of localization lore? Uh, I've been seeing a little drip feed of that from my Discord server. I, actually, uh, I ordered my own copy of the book yesterday, so within two weeks to six months, I'll be able to look at that myself. Um, from what I understand, the book is not quite an official piece of merch. Like, it's... Legends of Localization is an independent series, um, and it's obviously greenlit by Toby. And it's written by the person who translated Undertale, as far as I know, at least I assume it is, um, who would have insight in that way into, like, he would have talked directly, talked directly to Toby about, you know, the finer points of how, what, what things mean. Um, but there also seems to be a fair amount of, like, editorialization that comes into it about, like, you know, at, at this point in the story, it becomes clear to the player that a different entity is inhabiting the protagonist. And that's the part where it's unclear, like, whether that's coming directly somehow from Toby, or whether it's just an assumption being made by Tomato or whoever made the book, right? So, unless it's clear that that's not just sort of what the tom uh, Tomato interpreted was happening, or, or his personal headcanon, or I don't know... Um, he didn't translate it, he was a consultant. Right, but he was um, at least involved in the process, yeah. Um, it, I, I don't think that any of that is coming right from the horse's mouth. It's still sort of an interpretation as far as I'm concerned. So, um, I'm not taking any of it too much at face value. Yeah, it's, it's not a Bible. That's a good way of putting it, Remnant. It's a, it's an approved book, not like a, a a stone tablet with like the canon written on it, yeah. Because I could see a, a million different ways. Because it's generally true, yeah. The 
the um, you, you could present that to Toby, be like, I wrote the sentence here. The player becomes aware of uh, that the player is not them, but some other entity, and and maybe like that's vaguely correct, but like trying to analyze the exact specifics of how that's worded and what exactly it implies about Kara and you know like that's getting besides the point like um you can't be analyzing it to that level of detail if it wasn't even written by Toby in the first place and I've seen people go to that level of detail like on the discord lord channels and stuff so um that's my official take but I have to read the book myself still Spamton tells <laughs> Spamton tells Asgore he's like the daughter he never had. <laughs> yeah. And Spamton's like, I know this business. Goat cheese. I don't, what was the name of the book? Uh, Legends of Localization. Episode 3. I, I don't know. Okay. New Asgore name. Nose nuzzle champ. Uh, what was it, 98? You need to you haul your ass. Perfect. And how did Outson phrase it? Make sure the media understands that you're not gay. That's a really funny way of putting it. Um, we chapter three reference. Spamton has to be weird when referring to the media.
You need to U-Haul your ass in front of a camera now and make sure the powers that be understand that you're not gay. But Asgore looked confused. I mean, it's, it's, I, I have sex with all those men. I don't know. <laughs> I feel a bit sheepish about just writing that, but the fix already reached that level. You understand that I'm not the gay son I never had. I don't think we need the gay son I never had. Asgore would definitely be a bit more played about it when he's not like in, a, in the middle of a debate. Uh, But I dated all those men. All? Well, yeah, in uh, in high um, in in college, yeah. Should I specify in college? <laughs> Asgore must have been a hottie? I mean, ask the fandom. Oh, that's better. I've been dating nothing but men since my divorce. <laughs> Just implying that's way better than in college. That's not the point, somehow. Oh no, he just says... Allegedly! <laughs> I cracked myself up, I'm sorry. There are too many hot dilts in my area. We, we don't need to elaborate, let's just let the audience's imagination do the work here. How do we end the scene? I didn't think this through. Asgore sighed and went back to filling in the crossword.
Um, Asgore looks at the window and sees Chris and Noel heading for the bunker. Now that's that's when like night falls. This is like in the evening, and then they're gonna break out in the middle of the night to do that. Five bucks from Aldi Satchel. If you want to be a real special political man, you lie to the people. Well, he's already well into lying to the people, I think. He's he's done plenty of lying to the people. It's just this one point there. I think we've reached a nice conclusion to the scene here. We don't. This doesn't have to amount to anything. This is just supposed to be a quick check-in to the other characters. All right. Uh, now we can get get Chris's um. <laughs> Opens their like knife closet with uh, what the fuck was it? Scandium? Wasn't Samarium? Scandium knife. Okay. Um. Oh look at that. Five bucks from Lay the Cookies. Thank you. By the end of the fic, there should be a cap on the humorous gags by explicitly showing Birdly and Susie making out. It'll confuse anyone out of the loop. That's a, that's a good idea. We cut back to Denny's where Ralsei reincarnates and, and Birdly and Susie are just making out in the background. Yeah, moisture is also carved into the knife. Maybe Noelle is at Chris's house because she didn't want to go back home. I guess that would work. They're collaborating. Noelle could be in Chris's room. And she can ask why moisture is carved on the knife, and Chris is like, "That's my middle name." <laughs> Damn you, truck cunt! No, 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 no. That's for my other fan fiction, the um, Mario sixty four Elden Ring Delta Rune Isekai, which exists. That that has truck cunt, but we don't need truck cunt for this one. Chris is the Japanese guy who makes the jello knives. That's sort of canon already. It's in pro Technically, it's still in progress. Yeah, it hasn't been updated in months. Don't worry about it. Birdly isekais into the Elden Ring world. That's for the other fanfic. Don't, don't get it twisted. I already have an Elden Ring isekai. With Ralsei in it. Uh, okay. Ralsei is the maiden, yes. Uh, okay, how does this work? So Chris and Noelle in the room. Are we phone guy. I think we decided last stream that phone guy was Onion San, in a in a crazy Machiavellian scheme to stop um, the seabed being fracked. Like, Onion San discovered the source of the song and the sea was, I don't know, the dark world gaster, the night, well not gaster of course, but something like that. Didn't the, f uh, it happened before the fracking incident? Well, yeah, but the fracking is, um, it's been ongoing. It's been like a, a, a pre-existing platform that Halloween has had. It was just at the one debate it, it came up specifically. Chris owns a sword. Yeah. Um, did we just cut to like Chris opening the knife drawer like Gabe Newell? Oh, wait a minute, how does the scene with um, Toriel confronting Chris work if Noelle is there? Maybe it works anyway. Noelle is just there, and it's the same scene otherwise. M maybe 
what, what would happen here? Like, Noelle comes over, is like, we're gonna have a sleepover, Mom. You know, we're definitely not going to rig the election. And then they're... <laughs> the fracking is constant and eternal, yeah. You don't think Toby Fox puts this much thought in the character interaction? Well, if he doesn't, he, he's a lot uh, naturally better at it than I am, so we have to compensate somehow. Toriel asks Chris to not summon a demon again. Toriel's not in jail for attacking the mayor. Uh, I'm just trying to figure out how do we get into the scene here. We've had three scenes in a row where we cut to characters sitting at a table. I'm trying to break the pattern somehow, but... I'm thinking, like, we go right into the, the knife closet opening. Is that- that's maybe a bit too- too much of a smash cut? I don't know. Hmm. Toriel's under house arrest. <laughs> that's funny, actually. <laughs> It still works if Toriel's under house arrest, because she can still have that scene where she, she confronts Chris. Uh... Maybe Noelle's just asking about, like, uh, do, do you need a, a specific knife for this, Chris? And Chris is just rifling through her drawer of, like, 50, like rainbow anodized karambits I just sifted my closet full of knife to look cool. <laughs> Pretty much. As they rifle through a Lego spare parts bin worth of randomly assorted daggers. It's funny if they're uh, at Bala songs or butterfly knives, right? Yes, they are. Oh, drawer after drawer, there it is.
There you go. There's your Scandium cameo. Is that how you spell Karambit? Noel giggled awkwardly. Um, why does that one say? Middle name. Chris grunted. What knife is Chris actually looking for here? I guess that's a good question. This is the scene from the Matrix with all the guns, but with knives? Yes, and, and they're also, half of them are like, made of plastic and bought from mall kiosks. The kitchen knife. Um, the jello knife, that's it, that's it, the jello knife, you got it, all right. Um, finally, after it seemed every nook and cranny was exhausted, their hands snapped around the handle of one specimen like a steel trap. They withdrew a translucent yellowish kitchen knife. That emitted a faint scent of lime jello. <laughs> there we go. Uh, another five dollars from Algie Satchel. Thank you very much. Um, the, the reference reference to sacrificial dagger sands called the Chris knife. Um, the but the but the Jello knife. The Jello knife is so iconic, though. We we've already referenced. Um, we, we made the joke previously about the the sacrificial dagger being a Chris knife. Um, so I don't think I don't think we can reference it again here. Um, like a bear trap? Steel trap is an idiom by itself, but bear trap is a bit better, maybe. Wait, I never made the Chris joke? Let me check.
Fuck it. Just toss that in there. It's a Dune reference. Wait, the Jello knife can be a Chris? But that that Japanese guy who makes the knives, they're they're all just look like kitchen knives though. That wouldn't be canon compliant. The Jello knife's reference to the uh, Jaru theory, yeah, of course. It was faintly stained with white dust. <laughs> Why on earth Chris would want to use this weapon? God only knows. Actually, no, fuck that. The reference was fine as it was. Fuck that line. <laughs> Sentimental value, perfect. <laughs> the angel only knows. Wait, what's the actual name of the YouTube channel? Sharpest chocolate knife. Um, oh, it's it's literally in kanji. Wait, how do I copy paste that? YouTube won't let me. Oh, I think I got it. God, it's finicky copy pasting the channel name. Fuck, I'm gonna have to paste a bunch of shit then, just delete it. Somehow Noel just pronounces this flawlessly. Uh, wait. Why is there an exclamation mark there? How do I make this not a link? There we go. Wait, what? Stop being a link. Why do you like this? Why is it doing that? Ah, hang on, I got it. Boom. It looks like the uh, interrobang here. The exclamation mark is part of the channel name, though. Oh, shit. Oh, that was the stream music tab. Ah, fuck. Hang on, gotta get the music back. Somehow I, I searched up that channel on the same tab I was playing the music from without the music stopping. Oh, okay, the volume may be really loud to start off. Nope, it kept it. Okay, good, we're fine. No, I'll just slip into perfect Japanese, yeah.
Chris nodded. Why that one, though? Noelle asked. Um, okay, okay. They spend seven hours info dumping about knives and miss the election. <laughs> With that, that channel has a video called Engagement Ring Made from Human Nails. <laughs> it sounds awesome. Do you get Filthy Frank to collab? <laughs> I don't know. Why don't we ask the chat? No, I like sentimental value. value, they said. I'm going to make a rare reference to uh, the furry anatomy here. Uh, what, what's the floor made of in the Dreamer house? It, it, It's sort of like a, just an ambiguous texture, isn't it? If it was hardwood, this would be a concern, but if it's carpet, I'm not sure if it makes sense. Is it wood? Oh yeah, I can picture a wooden texture in the, uh... It is wood, okay. I can't picture it for some reason. Don't use the word clop. I know, I know what you're getting at, but I don't care, okay? I'm not gonna let... I'm not gonna let people co-op just a word of English language for their own nefarious purposes. Uh, I think we should drop a one-liner where Toriel's like, um, or it's sort of specified that like Toriel thinks they're having a sleepover or something. Or maybe Toriel doesn't even know. I mean, it doesn't really matter. You like the implication that since this takes place in the early 2000s, Noah has been a subscriber longer than the channel's existence. It's, um, it's a bit anachronistic. Yeah, we're all right. Should I want to know the context behind Klopp being co-opted? It's, a uh, my little pony thing. Google it if you feel like it. The thumbnail says 20x teen. Okay, whatever. It <laughs> doesn't matter. <laughs> Maybe don't Google it, says chat. I'm sure if you just clicked on the Urban Dictionary link, you'd be okay.
Chris had assured her that Toriel would be sleeping like a rock at this hour, but she didn't want to take any chances. This plan was their last chance. And Toriel has, like, used her mom's sense to just, like, teleport to the door, I guess. Hmm. Is Sans here too? What if... What if Toriel is awake because her and Sans like fell asleep watching Netflix and they're still on the couch? <laughs> Teleports behind you, Toriel said aloud. Nothing personnel, kid. I'm not doing the fucking a anime gag where Chris is like accidentally groping Noel and Toriel walks in. Get out of here. <laughs> That's not going in. Even if this is the Umrus canon. Uh, the da 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 da. So, t okay. How, how does this work? floor looks like carpet? I have to check myself, I'm curious. You go to Deltarune, Sprites, Spriter's Resource, got you covered. It takes a long time to load the Spriter's Resource for whatever reason. I'm not sure what's up with that website. Okay, it's really just not loading today. Never mind. Uh, it's hardwood if I say it is. What's happening in the story? Uh, Chris and Noel are trying to stop Asgore winning the election by rigging the vote towards Sands with Darkner votes. This is the climax. They gave a nod. They peer rounded the corner at the base of the stairs. Chris glanced left and right. After a moment, they gave a nod. The, close, the coast was clear. Random reference could be thrown in here. Is there any funny kitchen lore? There's the weird action figures in the windows that I could just randomly specify as being something. What's an incredibly specific line of action figures or like dolls that I could reference as being in the windows? Brats, Monster High <laughs> or something. The same one, but we don't know which ones Papyrus has. It has to be just Skylanders, there you go. <laughs> sill? Is it? I've never spelt written window sill before. That looks wrong, but I don't know.
<laughs> Chat thought it was window still. I thought it was sill. I missed a super chat. Where is that? Where is that? I may have been tabbed out fixing the music. It's two dollars and it just says they said menacingly. What could that it was referring to something earlier. I may have missed the context. Uh Oh, you mean why don't we ask the chat? They said menacingly. I think uh we, we went with the sentimental value instead there. Sorry, LG Satchel. It should be towards the bedroom door, not toward. Is there actually a difference? That's that seems like one of those really subtle linguistic quirks. I, I actually don't know what the difference is between toward and towards, to be honest. Um They came to the threshold of the living room. There we go. They came to the thresholds of the living room. The TV sat dark and silent as ever, the divots from Sans and Toriel's ass cheeks still deeply imprinted into the couch. Not the cough. I can't spell couch for some reason. And now Toriel just has to appear from the shadows somehow. Just like teleport. I'll add the house arrest line if it if it fits. She steps up from inside the fridge. That's pretty funny, I guess. But uh, hang on, I want to see the living room. Uh, see if there's any like place you could hide behind like that one pillar. But the spider's resource is failing me. Um, try again. In fact, the spider's resource just will not load. Um, Google Images, there it is, okay. Why is there no living room? Oh, there's a living room. Oh, she could appear from behind the chair. Wait, that's a fucking 3D model of the living room. Why not just show me the sprite, Google? Yeah, there's a chair. She could pop up from behind Cheriel. Uh, oh shit, $10 from Mooks. Thank you, thank you. For the bunker part, you should describe all the Lightner's Dark World forms in one large paragraph. While Spring in My Step plays, I, that's, I know the exact one. Um, the noise suppression may have removed that, but I, I whistled it beautifully just now. She drops from the ceiling like a Dark Souls boss. 
<laughs> I don't know what's better, actually. I, th I think the precedent of Toriel hiding behind uh, uh, scenery objects is more fitting. That's funny, though. <laughs> it's a dust-shaped pile of dust in the bunker, yeah. Oh my god, she teleports in, then explains that Sans taught her. That's fucking funny, too. That's really good. Is Spring in my step Kevin McLeod? I don't even know. Oh my god, the, the suggestions are so good. The, the pillar from Undertale is just there. <laughs> And she appeared. I kind of like teleporting and, and explaining that Sans taught her. I kind of like that one, actually. Oh yeah, Des needs to be alive to be Umrus compliant. Shit, you're, you're right. Des needs to be both alive and male. Uh, a very interesting set of constraints. She teleports with the pillar. I think we're it's a bit extra if she brings the pillar. <laughs> um We need just some line about like Noel looks away. There we go. Another five bucks from Algie Satchel. Thank you. Algie Satchel likes the idea of dropping from the sky as Dark Souls music plays. That's that's the start of Elden Ring. Maybe she teleports in and then drops from the sky. We can do both, okay? We can do both. She has a glowing eye like Sam's. Halloween renames nerdly to Des. Oh my god, that's how it's canon compliant? <laughs> that's how it's canon compliant. Holy shit. <laughs> that's fucking ridiculous. I love it. Nerdly, yeah, because that explains he, him, Des. It, 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 it's everything. It all fits. Oh my god. <laughs> the death line earlier? No, death was still uh, Halloween's daughter and she died. That's just also true. Uh, another two dollars from Mooks. Thank you. The song is by Silent Partner and copyright free. Ah, uh, hell yeah. Let me look that up real quick. There it is. We, okay, I'm, I'm gonna put that on a loop while describing the um, the dark world forms. I like that idea. I'm picturing like the the opening to a uh, like Margit's boss fight, where he just jumps from across the castle and lands in this this huge plume of dust. <laughs> uh, 
I don't think I ever really specified that it was dark. That's really important to the scene. Uh, how do I... Where do I put that it's dark? I'll just save the dark stairwell. That'll do. Okay. There we go. Throwing Thoriel dropped from the ceiling, impacting the ground with a thud that shook the house to its foundations and throwing up a shock wave of dust and shed hair from the carpet. It's just regular night. Uh, dust, okay? It's not all Asriel's dust. It can't all be Asriel's dust. <laughs> they start sneezing because of the dust. This is how we write Noelle out of the fight, as she was sneezing the whole time. This is going on AO3? Oh yeah. It sure is. Another five bucks from Algy Satchel, thank you. I just imagined Vort of the Boreal Valley starts playing. Uh, basically, yes, that's exactly what I'm picturing, as Toriel teleports in the sky and dives down sword in hand. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think Margit's the- Margit looks like Toriel anyway. Foul tarnished in search of the Elden Ring. It's Rudy's dust. It's no one's dust. Holy shit, stop. What if she has like a, a comical one-liner, like, nice sleepover? Have you two been having a nice sleepover? She said, in perfect deadpan. Greetings. Well, I guess we're gonna keep Noel POV.
Noelle watched from the carpet with her streaming eyes as they squared off against their mother. And now we just recreate the entire scene from Undertale. It should write itself. That's <laughs> menacingly. You will catch a cold wandering around at night. <laughs> Toriel should offer Noella a Claritin. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe on the way out, after the battle's done. She said... Let's I think <laughs> let's make it even more extra A voice soft and dripping with cold authority. Oh, there's a, a the selected image in an unsupported format. Didn't even notice that. My eyes are at the bottom of the page, exclusively. So I guess we should ask ourselves, why actually is Toriel trying to stop Chris? <laughs> why, why actually does she, what is she doing here? Does she just assume that Chris is going to, like, battle Asgore to the death? That's just her assumption for some reason? She doesn't support election fraud. She thinks they're going to kill Azriel again. <laughs> Fuck. I wanted the scene to be here. Yeah, but like that didn't mean I knew exactly the reason yet. She's just the boss. That doesn't need to be a reason. It's it's just past curfew. That's that's all she cares about. This gets, like, really intense for some reason. I have to do this, Mom. Chris said almost too quietly to hear. What if it's a, don't do this? This has to be like uh, Raiden versus Jetstream Sam here. It's real intense.
Do not be cheeky with me, Chris. You don't understand, my child. I am the Metal Gear Rising, Revengeance. <laughs> Chris, my source is that I made it the frick up. <laughs> yeah. you intend to do i do not endorse voter fraud so does she know or does she not it's it's kind of better if she it's not just a misunderstanding but uh um does toriel ever say my child and deltarune irrelevant it's an undertale reference who cares It has to be this way. I cannot allow it. It has to be this way. a better way to write this. They already got heartache cranked, yeah. Chris should reference the batter. Chris is, is already a, a batter reference. They're just a walking batter reference. This song is now pure. What does the batter say? It's like, you will not stand in the way of uh, my holy judgment. That's not really Chris. She busts out the fire, then Sans breaks it up, I guess. Or should she go deeper into the Undertale speech? It's like, you know what will happen if you leave. I have seen it. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Uh... Um... 
I'm gonna... Here we go. Here we go. So maybe... Um, does, does Toriel think they're going to get opium, maybe? <laughs> That's the only other angle I can imagine here. Oh, I thought you were going to do drugs in the woods. Never mind. How do we rework um, the Undertale? Like, they, they come, they leave, they die. That That's the line I want to reference here. How do we re rework that into, like, uh, opium? <laughs> Uh, they come, they smoke, they go in debt to the British? <laughs> they, they go, do drugs, they, uh, eat hot chip, be bisexual, and die. <laughs> All of these fucking, uh, rewrites of the line suck ass. I've... I'm doubting this plan now. Sands is just boiling water in the background. <laughs> I'll, I'll reference that when he joins the scene. I'll just be like, Sands, who was boiling water in the background to make craft dinner. Um, Toriel has had multiple families in the past. All of the kids died from opium. Holy shit. They smoke, they come, they smoke, they choke. Well, they, they, they toke, maybe? They, 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 they toke, they smoke, they go broke. What exactly is the act of a toke? Is that lighting the blunt or is it smoking the blunt? I'm assuming it's smoking the blunt is toking. Write dialogue in such a way that the audience never figures out if Toriel knows the reason. I don't know if I can pull that off, though, is the thing. It's the inhaling. It's, it's, it's so bad it's good. If I can get the whole thing to rhyme, it becomes so bad it's good. But only if it all rhymes. Uh, otherwise, it's, it's just a terrible line. Um, so, uh, they... They, uh, what the fuck rhymes with toke? I'm gonna bust up the rhyme dictionary. This is serious. This is the new Mr. Creamer of this stream. Spoke, broke, they, 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 they toke, they go broke? That, that could work. Woke, joke, oak, stroke, folk. Invoke, provoke, cloak, coke, baroque. I think it's pronounced baroque actually, but yoke. God, there's so many. Baroque, as in die. Uh, they toke, they smoke, they choke. Like, fuck, that's stupid. Uh, uh, let's just demo this. How does this look on the page? <laughs> that sucks. God, that sucks so bad. Two bucks from Algie Satchel to suggest they smoke, they broke, they croak. <laughs> they broke. What the fuck? It's like a rap lyric.
They choke, they they toke, they choke, they croak. Uh <laughs> What if it's they they toke, they go broke, they croak? <laughs> God, this is cringe. Oh, that it's canonically a gaster lyric. It's that that's perfect. She heard the lyric in Gaster's church sermon. That's how it works. You've done it. You've cracked the code chat. Thank you. What if she launches right into summoning the fireballs, revealing unceremoniously that monsters could use magic all along, and then Chris is just like, What the fuck did you say, Mom? <laughs> like, the whole fight just grinds to a halt. Chris, Chris is so confused about how bad that line is. She became enwreathed in swirling gouts of flame. Chris and Noel stared in silence for several seconds. The ceiling began to char. Oh no, maybe, maybe Sans breaks the silence. <laughs> Sans? <laughs> I got it, okay. I guess that canonically craft dinner is Canadian, isn't it? Fuck it. I guess the uh Sands imports it to Vermont. Yeah, Chris and Noel aren't in shock at the flames. They're just like, what the fuck was that line? Vermont has been annexed by Canada. That make yeah, that sure that can be Canada. this whole time.
Uh, sorry, Tori. What did you just say? Sorry to interrupt, maybe? Uh, sorry to interrupt, Tori. What did you just say? Uh, da 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 da. Hmm. Stan says, Here comes the grub. God. Uh, hmm. Sounds of turning more Canadian. He was bitten by some sort of werewolf. Canadian were bear. I don't know. I need to get the font. There we go. Toriel deactivated the flame pillar. What do you mean? He called back. The uh, uh, smoke token croak thing. I wanted to say, like, what the actual fuck was that? <laughs> Completely out of character. Literally, what even was that? He, he, he quotes it wrong. It's, it's fine. No, no contractions. It was from your brother's sermon yesterday. I thought it was a powerful... Um... I thought it was a powerful encapsulation of the vicious cycle of addiction. Is it not? <laughs> no, Tori, that's cringe. <laughs> The background music is Omori Lo-Fi. It's, it's linked in the description. How many words is this? Like 14 and a half thousand?
<laughs> Sans and Chris say it cr it's cringe in unison. What if Chris and Noel say it's cringe? That that's even even stupider. Like if Noel pipes up to call you cringe, you'd really fucked up. <laughs> I kind of I, I like that. No, Tori, that's cringe. They all say in unison. Uh, no, Sans starts. And then Chris and Noel finish it. No, Tori, no. <laughs> Gaster's outside the window and also says it. <laughs> Gaster doesn't think his own lyrics are cringe. I'm gonna make Sans face palm. I'm gonna do it. Uh, pick the font. This is weirdly contrived to write here. I'm having trouble. How does he facepalm with no face? Sans has a face. Sans is like actually offended here. <laughs> I'm not sure if this works. Like this doesn't really feel right for his character. No, it Sans doesn't start the sentence, it's just cringe. <laughs> That's really cringe, Mom, Chris said. Maybe Noelle's the, the one who finally figures out, like, just tell her we're not going to buy drugs. Noel, having recovered from the allergenic fit. Chimed in from the floor. Uh, 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 close enough. We're not actually going to buy drugs, Miss Streamer. If that was the issue, she she finally just says it. Then the situation is is resolved. It would be kind of funny. It's kind of funny. If if they immediately leave after saying what they're actually going to do, and Sans is just outside the door, and he does the same thing. 
And he goes, whoa there, kiddo, I can't let you go make me win the election. <laughs> and the whole thing just repeats. <laughs> it would make the scene gratuitously long, though. And, and then Toriel just pulls him back inside. The chat seems to like it. All aggression instantly drained from Toriel's posture. Oh, oh, I see, she stammered. Does Toriel think it's possible to, I don't know, s smoke codeine or something? Um, let, let's uh, let's say smoke heroin. It's Toriel. She, she just assumes that that's how you take heroin. It's fine. Oh, no, uh, can't, I fucking held the contractions. I suppose in that case it would not be, um, in, um, out of the question, it would not be, uh, fuck, what, what's the word? Yes, double negative. It only looks like that because it's, there's no contractions allowed though. I suppose in that case it would not be such a big problem. Yeah, Chris said. We're just going to ring the election so Sans wins. <laughs> it would not be my place to force you to stay. Uh, it's always Toriel's place to uh, force Chris to do things, but... All right then. <laughs> She's immediately on board.
have fun. Toriel is, in fact, down with uh, election fraud. Thanks, squeaked Noelle as she peeled herself off the carpet and followed Chris through the front door. Uh, is that how you spell Claritin? Would you like a Claritin before you go? Heidel, no. Toriel asked. Another five bucks from Melty Satchel. Thank you. Lots of donations. Um. Ah, uh, yes. I remember when I rigged my first election as a kid. Good times. While you two stay safe. <laughs> that's that's the sentiment. Yeah. Uh. Why why'd the music stop? Hang on. Maybe it reminds her of college. Uh, would that work? Reminds me of my college days. It brings back memory. How does that work? <laughs> Thank you. Mom gave all the allergy meds to Nerdly. It reminds me of Watergate. <laughs> Is Watergate too much? I, I could say, please try to do a better job than I did back in college. Watergate's funny. I don't, I don't know if it's too far, though. Alright then, Toriel said beaming. Have fun. Please try to do a better job than I did back during Watergate. Yeah, it's just Watergate, sure.
Uh, uh, I'm fine, thanks, Noel said and scurried across the threshold. Chris slammed the door behind them. Close call, they said. And now we have to immediately go into like a Sans appears. This could get exhausting, so we have to keep this brief. I've heard the story time and time again. They toke, they broke, they croak. What's the contradiction? I, I don't get it. Too bad we're not allowed to pick up any drugs. I was gonna pick some up on the way back. <laughs> oh, a contraction. Not a contradiction, I misread. There it is. Fixed. Okay. And we have to get them cut off again in the same way. Um, how did that happen up here? Sands drops from the sky. Uh, landing with a thud that sprayed craft dinner everywhere. Pot still clutched in his hand. There we go. Here comes the grub. She, she bought the grub all, the grub all right. The caster blasters appear. <laughs> uh, okay, I need Comic Sans again. Hey, uh, so, Chris. Uh, Garmond. Does Chris know who, uh, or does Sans know who Noel is? What does he call her? Christmas girl? Sans, yeah, Sans has not turned the stone off, uh, the stove off, correct. <laughs> the 
Des? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh yeah, she stands in front of the freezer. Oh yeah, freezer girl. That'll work. Good catch with the lore there. Oops. Capitalized. Did you just say something about making me win the election? Uh, $2 from Dragonhammer06, thank you. Are we going to do a recap for anyone behind? Uh, the recaps are at the start of the stream. And th they take so long that I can't really do more than one anymore, is the thing. Um, so I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> it, it depends how behind you are. Like, if you've missed several streams... Um, even during the recaps, I only read from what it wrote last stream, because the entire thing would take several hours to read at this point, so, um, there's not really a, a quick fix for that. Like, if you're really behind, you sort of have to just go back read at this point, I think, unfortunately. The scene is not lazy enough for Sans. I, Sans has to do something. Like he has to eventually take some action in the situation here. Um, his entire motivation at this point is to be lazy. He does not want to win the election. Just have him teleport. He did. He fell from the sky. Is it not implicit that he teleported? Did he teleport? Chris said. Gonna rule the election. <laughs> Sans lets Chris win the election for him in exchange for being Chris's dad. Basically, what the scene is going to amount to, I think, yeah. We have to keep this brief. I have to resist the urge to get carried away into actual conversation here. Tell the truth, I was kind of hoping I misheard you there. Because, uh, in that case, we were going to have a problem.
Megalovania just starts playing. He, he just launches into the genocide monologue. <laughs> that's more of what, that's what Cardboard Sans would do. Does he play Megalovania from like a Sony Walkman in his pocket? I can't afford not to care anymore. Well, it's uh, he cares so much about not having to care, and and he wouldn't be able to not care being mayor. It really just works, doesn't it? Megalovania starts playing, but it's his ringtone. <laughs> Uh, yeah, sure. Megalovania from Undertale started playing from Sans's pocket. Oh shit, I mean, shoot. There we go, um... Not courier. He has to give a bit of a monologue here. I can't not afford. I can't afford not to care anymore. About. But Megalovania is Kara's theme. Says <laughs> the unwashed mashes. It, it kind of, kind of is. I, I, I agree a little bit with that take, honestly. Doesn't matter though. Literally doesn't matter. The whole boss fight, uh, the whole boss fight Megalovania was actually just playing from Sans's phone. Cause, uh, I don't know if Gaster was calling him. Sans does a pun. Yeah, Sans needs to do a pun. You're right. Uh, yeah, it's, it, that's, it's Sans' ringtone because he's a big fan of the Earthbound Halloween hack and or Homestuck. Actually, should I specify? Nah, just leave it. Uh, okay, what's the pun? We need a pun. Um, not ice to meet you, freezer girl. Uh, maybe? It's like a perfunctory pun. Uh, I used to meet you, yada yada. There's the pun, okay. How did you not think of the Green Sands reference? We, we've already referenced Green Sands. <laughs> Toriel comes out until Sands that he burnt the water. <laughs> A five dollars from Algie Satchel, thank you. To say, have Chris say you like Undertale, that weird game and <laughs> absolute disgust. No, it's it's only funny if it's not acknowledged. It it has to be like that. Um 
Uh, the, the only response from Chris reasonably here could be cringe, but we've already said that so many fucking times. Wait, how did I resolve that back here? Weren't they all gonna say cringe in unison? I don't remember that happening. Oh no, Chris said it, okay. That's really cringe, Mom. Oh yeah, Asriel made Undertale in this canon. Uh, I don't want to think about that. It's just I don't even want to think about that. Oh, you know me, Chris. I have my shop. I watch TV with your mom. I kind of don't want to be the mayor, though. Uh, something like that. <laughs> so hear me out. Gang war. It's it going to be the, the ending of Sekiro. The, enti the entire town is burning down as this concludes. We ha okay, we got to get to the end, though. We I can't be delayed by any of this stuff. We have to finish the stream. Oh, should I do the Yoshikage Kira rant? That's a good idea. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna look up the copy pasta. I get home every day at 8 p.m. at the latest. Uh, I never, I don't smoke. That's an, uh, an improv there, just an ad-lib. Christmases. I'm not doing Christmases. <laughs> Sans quoting anime won't make you my dad. That's the reply. I'm putting that in. Chris could just reply, is that a motherfucking JoJo reference? <laughs> Why does he have to glue? You know, everyone has a vice. That's just a new, new, uh, new information. get along, but you can respect that, right? Quoting anime doesn't make you my dad sins. <laughs> that is such a good fucking line.
Uh, I'm not sure how to respond to that. Quit hand. How do we re resolve this efficiently? Just silence. It can't just be silence forever. Maybe that line just makes sense. Reconsider his whole fucking life on the spot. He's like, uh, yeah. When you when you put it that way. Just fake your death and make your vice mayor the mayor. Maybe no, that's Noelle's suggestion, because Noelle's familiar with this political bullshit from her mom, right? So she can just be like, it, it's okay, Sans, you can just fake your death. Or, or some bullshit. That's rough, buddy. <laughs> wow, rough. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's pretty Sansian. Well, wow, that's rough. <laughs> Oops, still Comic Sans, Escape Comic Sans. That's fine. Um, can never escape. I can never escape. This, this chat. This. Oh, uh, oh! Uh, Want to know something that can make you my dad? Uh, basically, we were trying to get to that point. This is. Not the easiest to write though. Writing sans properly takes a bit of concentration and I'm, I'm trying to just go fast here, but it's... I feel like it's not... It's, it's... the quality is kind of suffering, but oh well. Um... Please do a Magnus Archives reference. I don't know what that is. Well, that's rough. That's rough. Um, when you put it that way. Sans asks what you could do. Awkward silence, okay. Deploy awkward silence, see if we get anywhere. Sans makes a deal. 
Yeah, okay, Sans has to- Sans speaks back up, and he says, like, you know what? Eventually, something seemed to dawn on Sans. It gets real business-like. But what if what if Sans is like make me a promise? Because that's a thing from Undertale. <laughs> I don't know. All right, kid, I guess I'm gonna have a bad time. You'll be dadded where you stand. That's Chris's respond. That, I, I'm speaking in like Google translated English because my brain is overheating. Uh, yes, that's Chris's response. You'll be dadded where you stand. It's perfect. That's perfect. And then Noel, okay, this it, it's all falling into place. I, I get it now. Not your dad. Uh, your uh, other dad. Leading the town into a hellish regime of uh, racial violence. Uh, is dystopic not a word? I thought it. Whatever. Chris's many dads. Okay, Chris. Can you make a promise? If I let you win me this election and stop your uh, other dad from leading the town into a dystopian regime of racial violence... ...of endless racial violence... ...into a dystopian regime of self-perpetuating racial violence, then... Can I beat her dad? Boom. Sans dad art complete.
You'll be dead where you stand. <laughs> That's such a fucking good line. Uh, I can't spell dad. <laughs> Sans just like fist pumps. <laughs> I don't know. Hey, nice Undertale reference, dude. <laughs> yeah, my brother made that game. <laughs> this is so fucking dumb. <laughs> I'm just like wandering off into fevered hallucinations here. This is like dream dialogue. Noel's just standing there. <laughs> Sans unsure how to respond, look back to Noel. Who snapped out of her T-pose a few frames after uh, entering his field of vision. Like the the shit post, you, you can put like a little gauge on the bottom of the screen during these streams. That's like shit post meter. How seriously is Andrew taking the fic? And it's all the way up at this point. This stupid scene has like broken me. The stream is the ultimate comfort food. That's kind of a nice thing to hear, actually. Um, I definitely go through phases with like what kind of streams I'll want to listen to. Like recently I've been, for some reason, all I've wanted to watch are um, like math explainer videos and speedrun history. <laughs> that That's my current mood. But yeah, sometimes I'm definitely down for just to listen to some guy drone on about um, fan fiction for hours. It's, um, it was always like during the really stressful periods of like exams at school where, uh, there's that, that one Macintosh channel that was reading the Subspace Emissary World's Conquest, and I... There were just these, like, shitty kind of videos thrown together, just a guy filming his laptop. Um, but, like, I, I, for some reason I just kept coming back to them. I was just in the, the right headspace during that time. Speedrun histories are based... They're so good, I, I never get sick of them. Um, Bismuth dropped the new one, um... I, like a couple days ago, which is like Bismuth is like only bangers from that channel really, but th then the Retro Game Mechanics Explained dropped the video in sync with him and they both linked to each other and uh, and, and like his was an even more in-depth explanation. It, it, it was it was kind of rad actually. Very impressive videos. <laughs> Can we get out of here, Chris? Can we get out of here? Uh, no, that's...
Sans his last name. Undertale's the obvious joke. Wait, didn't it wasn't it earlier in the stream I said Sans was gonna be his his actual last name is Undertale on the ballot? But we've already referenced the Undertale gag, so I think it's better if it's just something stupid. Creamer? Gaster? Sans Gaster is actually potentially could be canon, which is uh, unpleasant to think about. His last name is Sam's. Uh, Deltarune, okay. That's good. Wait, why is it doing that? Uh, you can always resign. the video game. We've already made the joke up here, okay? We, we can't double dip on that. That's what my mom always used to do when she wanted to turn off to go on trips. Uh, to go on cruises. No, wine tours. There we go. Perfect. <laughs> what did you miss? I'm not sure when you left is the problem. Uh, we're, we're still stuck in the scene where Chris and Noel sneak up, but we're, it's almost over now. We're finally escaping. Uh, $2 from Algie Sanchez to say Sans's parents are very religious. Yeah, I guess that is, there is sort of a canonical reason, like... I can't actually remember, I don't think the Deltarune was ever referenced in Deltarune. It was referenced in Undertale as the symbol. And they used the symbol in Deltarune for the, the church, I think, but... Um, it's not called the Delta Runes yet, at least. It's a bit confusing. Calvin has enough wealth to go on cruises consistently. She, she lives in like a big house. I don't know. She she's independently wealthy from like uh, oil money. She doesn't have to make money from being the mayor. Oh, Ralsei says the Delta Rune. Huh, okay. Fucking Ralsei, man. I wonder how we got all that information just coming from a plate of dino nuggets. See you guys. Uh, he walked back inside, and then Toriel yells at him for burning the water. Or leaving the stove on, maybe. <laughs>
Scene ends. Okay, we made it. Finally, we're out. Now we can cut to the, um... I think the play here... For burning the water, fine. What, but he, he's, he's already holding a pot of craft dinner. Um... You, you have to drain the water to get the craft dinner, so that that's impossible. That's a, that's a physical impossibility. All right. Resolve that with craft dinner lore. Now, okay, so the way we do this is we, we cut to some random monster going into the bunker with a with a throwaway line to say that's traditionally the pulling, for, yeah, whatever. Um, and then they just fall in. It's like the, the Peter Griffin going through the supermarket door gif where um, they're just suddenly stuck into the dark world. Um, and then we... It's like this for two hours. Well, we describe everyone's dark world fursonas or whatever. Um, and then somehow the fit concludes. It's election day now. Yes. The gift with Deltarune at the top. Yeah, I guess the, the connection's been made before me. Fair enough. Yippee! Says Aura Master. Yep. It seems like a dream when the fic ends, I'll wake up in a new world. Well, the same world, hopefully. Have it be like Napster, like waking up all depressed in the first scene? It, should it literally be Napster, look again, going to vote? And he, uh, they're thinking about, like, sort of the vague futility of um, modern uh, democracy and whether the vote really even counts. And then, then it gets cut off by uh, just getting sucked into the dark world. What is, uh, use this time chat to think of all the characters' dark world designs. Like, what's Nabstablook look like in the dark world? Election day. The phrase mid-morning light popped into my head, and I think that's lyrics from Through the Fire and Flames, of all fucking things. But why not? Da-da-da, through the mid-morning light, with something in our hearts. That's the one. What the fuck is mid-morning? We need to resolve who phone guy is. That, that'll be after this. <laughs> they look, just say the dark world designs look cool and describe none of them. Nah, it's more fun if we describe some. Napstablook is a rainbow candy ghost in the dark world. What is that? What do you mean? Sans becomes Ness? <laughs> Sans isn't going to vote in the election. Sans is just going to be manning his shop. He, like, he doesn't even want to be here. A 3D realistic fish. I, I feel like we should just steal designs from Inverted Fate or whatever. Just any, any AUs that have designs. Uh, I can just steal those. It'll be fine. It, maybe Prunzel's dark world form is papyrus, leading to insane lore implications. Yeah, what what are the bunker darkeners? Just just an army of faceless goners? Like what's what's some random fan interpretation that we could throw in? A million rudens. Those are only in the. Ah, uh, the card castle, though. Prunzel can be a giant nose. 
Spamton already has that covered. They're Toby Fox. <laughs> There's 50 copies of Toby Fox. All the chapter one darkness taken to the bunker? They weren't taken to the bunker though. Like we chapter one hasn't happened yet. Um Paper Trails had human gaster. Ugh. Inverted fate Azriel appears. Maybe this is where I get Lucas Howard in. What the the darkners are the ballots themselves? We, the ballots are filling out ballots? What? Or everyone in the bunker is Newbert. Uh, yeah, interesting. <laughs> okay, uh, I think I have to keep writing here. Uh, what are they actually called? Like polling stations? Like they, they must have a, a name for them. Like they're on signs and stuff. Like learn your nearest polling location. Uh, the ballot box. I'm gonna Google it out of desperation. Where's chat GPT when you need it? Oh shit, I'm gonna... <laughs> if this wanders into the other screen, I'm gonna dox myself. Hang on. Okay. Just voting locations? That's That's lame. Uh, maybe I, I say Naps and Blake drifted toward the bunker and then quickly explain that's where they go to vote. It's not a long walk, is it? Ghosts don't walk. Um... We need some bullshit lore for the bunker. It's like where the town's founder in 1866 placed the first um, a, a postal box that connected it to the interstate highway. I don't, I don't know. Whatever the fuck happens in like American towns. Uh, $2 from Algie Satchel to point me toward Cherry PG. What does that say? Where it at? Weird at though. I can't find it. There it is. I would kill for phone guy to be queen trying to make Noel happy and get rid of Spamton as a side benefit. No, it's Onion Sun though. That's. Um. Phone guy to be queen. Introducing. We, we haven't had any chapter specific darkners yet as uh, aside from Spamton who has the meme appeal. So I don't know about that. All the messages in chat are just asking me to read other messages now. Gang, this is my uncle Bobby Flay. The, the chef? I, I don't know what you're referencing. Oh wait, no, Fred Jones. Was Fred's uncle the famous chef Bobby Flay? What? I don't get it. What's happening, chat? All the dark nerds are, dude. What if the dark nerds are Neko Kara? It's it all references that one stupid sight gag in my video. Everyone will get it. It was a last minute change by Cal, hoping to discourage turnout. Oh, that's a good fucking call out, Sin.
There, that's good. It's like a fallout bunker. It's the the, the Deathen bunker. In a last-ditch effort to decrease the voter turnout, Mayor Holiday had designated the abandoned fallout bunker at the edge of town as the single valid voting location. <laughs> Can I read the message below? Is Papyrus the knight in this AU? Yes. Good call out, Sin. On one hand, the move struck them as a blatant mis misuse of power to subvert the very foundations of the democratic, the, the democratic system that elected her mayor in the first place. had given her, derived her authority, that had, what the fuck's the word, uh... Supported... Yes, it, seemed, it struck them as a blatant misuse of authority to subvert the very foundations of the democratic process that allowed her to rise to power in the first place. Elevated her to authority. There we go. But on the other hand, they didn't have hands. <laughs> Perfect. Has to be spelled Nunnert. What is that backward? Trend nut? I don't get it.
The dew clung to their dangling ectoplasmic ghost fringes. As they floated down the path into the woods. Uh, the road wasn't even paved. And they noted the lack of wet floor sign as a potential safety health and safety hazard. Unfortunately, they weren't on duty that day, and so were helpless to do anything about it. Napster Book should just be Dapper Book. Is that's just Napster Book in a top hat, though? Oh, you mean in the dark world? I kind of like the idea that Napster Book just turns into some like metaton looking David Bowie thing. It's I'm not. That's kind of funny. With a tux. It's just Naps the Blick wearing a tuxedo. That also works. What if Naps the Blick literally just turns into David Bowie and is really confused because they don't know who that is? No, like that, that's it. That's it. Naps the Blick doesn't get the memo and looks normal in the dark world. <laughs> They didn't prepare a redesign. Hmm. Napster Blick is walking all the way to the bunker to cast a spoiled ballot committed to the nihilism. <laughs> I don't think Napster Blick has, um has enough ideological conviction to believe in nihilism that much. Belief in nothing is still belief in something at the end of the day. Flaking with thick scales of ru uh, say sheets of rust. Sheets, come on. Very, very dark inside.
There we go. Napstablik tried to shrug, uh, or Napstablik tried to shrug, but lacked shoulders, and so instead simply drifted through into the space beyond. Another in the dark world. and fell several minutes before handing, uh, landing harmlessly atop a heap of moaning bodies. Okay, now we describe them all. Looking around, they spotted what looked like many um, occupants of the town. But altered. Uh, but no, but wearing some sort of cosplay. Perfect. They're wearing some sort of outlandish cosplay. Now we... Here we go. Let, let's do it. <laughs> Commit. Colon. All right, we're just going to list their designs. No thought, no sentence flow, just list the designs. All right, uh, I see Jockington was in a mech suit. Tim is in the Tim armor. Gerson is looking normal. Jockington can vote. Th that's true. Okay, I'll leave this to the end and say... Okay, that goes at the end. Alphys is just a, a troll from Homestuck. <laughs> That's good. That's good. I get turned to Nikola Tesla. Caddy becomes Ebony Darkness Dementia Ravenway. Uh, Caddy, who could not vote. Alright, if, if you want Caddy to be uh, Ebony Darkness Dementia Ravenway, whoever posted that, go look up My Immortal the fanfiction, get an actual quote, a paragraph describing her outfit, paste it in chat, and I will paste it in turn into the fic. That's how it's gonna work. Jerry becomes Jeff from Earthbound.
Boom. Um, Hapstablick was a cruel robot with long legs. Yeah, uh, the, the Hapstablick isn't a canon name though, uh, maybe, maybe we can, we have Napstablick POV, we can just say their cousin. Maybe that's our out. The annoying dog is addressed as Andrew Hussey. Um, We, we can do their cousin and their cousin parenthesis grumpy. Someone is a gangster Spongebob. Who? Um, we have to think of like names for like the, the one NPC at QC's with the cowboy hat. From QC's, diegetically. These suggestions aren't quite as good as I hoped. <laughs> Sans is not there. Why am I playing 2012 YouTube room tour music? This is the, um, uh, my immortal dress up music. Uh, it's important. Two dollars from Algie Satchel. The Undyne has a sword that is two times larger than her body. Yes, good. Um, any other suggestions for, uh, someone said Undyne was a, a size two fish from Ultra Kill. That's a bit specific Berserk reference. Maybe Undyne is just Guts. I, I wasn't planning for all of them just to be references to like, the, the entire cast of Tales Gets Trolled is just in here. Washua is wearing a Mori cosplay. Is, is, is there a Washua in hometown? Toriel has transformed into a pillar. Melvin's father, Pucci. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, there's my immortal quotes in chat. Oh, there it is. There it is. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to copy paste it, but chat keeps moving. There we go. Well, okay. that reached her mid-back and icy blue eyes like limpid tears? What is that? Okay, perfect. Caddy, who could not legally vote, was nonetheless there and had become a human with long ebony black hair with purple streaks and red tips that reached her mid-back and icy blue eyes like limpid tears and a lot of people told her that she looked like Amy Lee. Okay. I like the way from chat, everyone's... Okay, um... Monster Kid becomes Tails? <laughs> Miles Tails Prower. Okay. Monster MK kid who could not le vote.
that's where he's from. Um, LG Satchel with uh, $2. There's three frogs with Tommy guns and fedoras. Alright. Just join. What is this music? People are joining during this. No, stop. Go back. This isn't the part you joined during. I'm sorry. We're describing every person in town's uh, dark world form now while playing, um, Bring in Your Step. Who's gonna become Des? Oh, that's- yeah, someone just has to become- Brunzel became Papyrus. Perfect. Nerdly would become Des. Uh, no, Nerdly's not allowed to be here though. That you're not allowed to uh, solicit votes around voting locations. Pizza pants became burger pants. You can vote, though? What candidates can vote for themselves? Oh, yeah, Nerdly could vote, I guess. Frunzel becomes Papyrus, and Papyrus also becomes dark to them. <laughs> Nerdly is a minor? Probably. I don't- whatever. I don't, I don't care. Uh, Gaster becomes Jesus Radiation Christ. Grillby's become becomes a campfire. <laughs> no, what if Grillby becomes um just a propane tank? What? No, Grillby isn't in Deltarune. What? What are you talking about? The warrior becomes Pizza Face. This is true art right here. Yes. Birdly was the Joker? <laughs> Who cannot legally vote. But we. Uh, the joke's gonna run out at some point.
Uh, uh Elvin is Father Pucci, but described indirectly. Um, how do you even describe Pucci's hair? I don't think you can describe that with language. Rudy gets a ninja costume like in the comic Chris performs surgery. Alright. I've already used that. Uh, what was Rudy dying of? Leukemia? There's no yellow in Metaton X? Uh, oh. Shit. What other color is Metaton? I, I was thinking of Spamton's color scheme, actually. Black. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, where did I even put that? Holy shit. There it is. What did you miss? Uh, we're we're in the end game here. Yeah, what happens when a darkener goes back into the dark world after being reincarnated? Do you become like uh, Ganishka and Berserk? Like what happens? You're having a strong. Oh, that's good. Timmy was special enemy Timmy. Wait, no, no, no. Perfect. Um, I still don't know how to describe Poochie. <laughs> Fuck it, the, the Poochie reference has to go now because I don't know how to describe him. Temi is old enough to vote. Yeah, she's just been held back for 300 years. There we go. Alvin had become Oberon Smog. We haven't discovered the environment yet. That's good. Alfie's draws her fursona, then it shows it to Asgore. Alfie's has a fursona, really? Well, it's she has a troll sona here. That's close enough.
Toriel is on fire. No, Undyne is on fire. Um, d does anyone have like a fan design of a uh, Toriel? Like, like a, a chapter 3 fan Toriel? I guess I could just Google that. Oh, she just looks like she's an Undertale. What the fuck is that? Does she have a mustache? Everyone's either just drawing her looking like Ralsei or looking like Undertale Toriel. I guess Undertale Toriel it is. Tutorial. QC is the batter from off. Okay. Good. Uh, is this enough? <laughs> Have we done enough? Holy shit, this is gonna be like torture to read through. Like people are gonna get to this part and just drop the thick. It's, like it's not worth it. <laughs> More? <laughs> You're gonna throw up? <laughs> you better get a bucket, I'm gonna throw up. Yeah. Wonderful, that was great. Some could be cut? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> People are too invested at this point to stop, yeah. <laughs> Just like Homestack, oops. Uh, pretend I didn't say that. Oh, Halloween was a is a deer. R, R E I N. There it is. Who looked faintly like Margaret Thatcher. Uh, is it Margaret or Margaret? There's like a 50 ways to spell Margaret. Margarine. Isn't she already an anthropomorphic reindeer? <laughs> oh no, 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 oh, no, no, no. No, she's not. It's Margaret, okay. Built the best way. Apparently that's also 
th there's some way of spelling Margaret that looks like Margaret, but is actually Margaret. I, I don't. I, I. It's like a really weird kind of thing. That looked like Morgoth, the Omen King. <laughs> Margaret the Fell Omen Thatcher. Oh, that's Margo? I, I didn't even know. I think there's a Discworld character named that, and I never quite knew how to pronounce it, but I thought it was Margaret. Anyway, um, something has to happen in the scene. I need to apologize to readers, like the, uh, didn't, didn't Nintendo do that at some point? S some, like, this dude came on screen and formally apologized for the state of some game? Okay. So people were saying that it's going to be an entire dark world full of, um, well, like, b ballot themed darkners, for one. I I'm not apologizing. It's don't worry about it. <laughs> Aside from that, Naps to Blick with some disappointment noted that their form had remained unchanged, which probably meant that they'd missed some sort of memo. Form, come on. Um, let's just say a memo. Uh, the scenery. What? 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 What does it look like? Um, what? What if it's the? Uh, no, I can't really describe the gaster void from the survey program, can I? Uh, I haven't looked at enough, like random fan interpretations of like Chapter Seven Ultra Dark World with the Titans. Uh, I don't have a mental image for this. What what if the horizon is just like the titans are looming above them? It's floor one of pizza tower. <laughs> well, we've gotten all our dumb references out of the way. We have to get back to brass tacks.
No. Uh, aside from that, the, f the voiding facility appeared to have been transported into an undulating purplish void, the only ground beneath them a plain of smooth gray rock stretching out into the misty distance. Far on the horizon, the silhouettes of immense multi-eyed beasts loomed over the proceedings like celestial bodies. <clears throat> Halloween says dad when she looks at a titan. Nah, <laughs> that's kind of funny. We've reached black space, so no. Uh, music. Need more music. We're running out of time here. I have to wrap this up rapidly. Oh shit, we need another footnote. I say it has to be rapidly finished and then you gotta do it though. Uh... That's a French word, right? Named after Etienne de Silhouette? What? That sounds like a joke. It's named after a French dude. The reason remains uncertain. What? It's just named after some dude? All right, that's a cool fact. Perfect. The word silhouette derives from the late 18th century French politician Etienne de Silhouette, whose last name was French for Umaris. What, a shockingly large amount of floor spikes for extra danger? That's what's in the in the dark world, just floor spikes? What? There were, however, still a row of ballot boxes set up. The silhouette lore is insane. I know. I didn't. I didn't know it was named after some French dude. It says like even like Google says that the reason is unclear. So no one even knows why. That sounds like the fake toilet lore for, like, Thomas Crapper invented the toilet, which isn't even true as far as I know, but this one is true. Like, John Silhouette invented the silhouette in 1794. I'm seeing, like, funerals in chat for cardboard sands. Nice. Uh...
<laughs> there were, however, still a row of ballot boxes set up, so Napstablek figured things were under control. They quickly drifted over to cast a vote before anyone could notice that they weren't in costume. <laughs> Wikipedia says Silhouette was named after his cheap economic policies because Silhouette portraits were the cheapest type of portrait. It was apparently because the common enough analogy that it, they became one. So it, it, it's because he was a cheapskate. <laughs> cool. Huh. Well, that's neat. Spamton is watching it all. W what if Spamton is now trapped? He, like, once he goes back to the dark world, he can't escape again, and he's he's just like drifting through the void with like a a, a nose two light years long for all eternity. I don't know. He enacted austerity because the debt from the Seven Years' War. Ah, that would do it. He didn't start the war, but he had to... <laughs> the previous administration started the war and made Silhouette pay for it. Good on them. Spamton goes back to being the smart toaster hybrid. Oh, that's actually kind of funny. <laughs> the other monsters can leave, but Spamton's nose is too long to fit through the door. <laughs> okay. Um, what if, what if the Darkners look like ballot boxes themselves? And they're like camouflaged as, as more ballot boxes? I, I don't know. My imagination is struggling here. And the ballots. The ballots all cast themselves as votes. Uh, Hey, bub. It said brusquely. Line starts back there. How does a ballot box gesture? Oh. 
Oh, that's the trick. The row of ballot boxes is actually just a lineup to use the one real ballot box. An extremely muscular arm, okay. It just stood toward the back of what Napstablick had taken for a long row of voting stations. Under greater scrutiny, they could see it shifting slowly back and forth. Bunch of ballot boxes, one ballot box. Is that like a, a Viper album? How long will the stream go on? Until it's done, damn it. I'm determined to finish it. Oh, that they're standing on like comical human feet. supported by similarly well-developed human legs. Uh, Outsin's uh, dropping out. Thanks for tuning in, Outsin. This is a great stream, legendary bit. It, it has been quite, quite the bit, if you consider this all one big bit. Yeah, it's, it's really grown into a beast, hasn't it? Uh, no art from Outsin today, sadly. Oh well. Can't have a banger every week. Oh, they're, they're ballet boxes. Not ballet, but that's exactly the kind of stupid pun that Toby would use, isn't it? A ballet box. Sorry, I thought you were a ballot box. Haha, <laughs> sorry. Ain't you ever seen a darkner before? Will there be more streams like this in the future? Uh, like this? Like writing effect? Not for a while. Um, we're, we need to do some other stuff after this. Um, take a breather. How long did I expect the fic to be when I first started writing it? I thought maybe like two streams, whereas this is the seventh. 
<laughs> yeek? Yeah, maybe yeek, actually. I'm not sure. Th that'll be fucking long, though. Like, yeek's a long game, as far as I know. Much of it spent reading insufferable monologues, also. Is it over? This is... I'm trying to wrap it up here. Maybe they didn't believe in democracy strong enough to vote that day after all. Uh, actually that's okay. I wasn't going to vote anyway. I need the aftermath of this whole event, and then that takes another stream. Not if we cut it off uh, without much denouement, but we'll see. Like, I could see an entire, like, de-escalation where we have, like, Asgore, well, what did I learn from all this today? Hmm. I don't know. Do we need that? I mean, theoretically, I could stream immediately tomorrow and wrap it up, but I think a lot of people can't really join for Monday streams, so... Uh, I don't really want to extend this for another week. So I don't know. I did that for Cave Story? Yeah, but these, uh... I, I figure people are, like, following along with these streams more. Like, you can sort of join into a, a gameplay stream and watch it, but for people who are, like, invested in election trucking, it's... It, feels unfair to uh, have the finale just be on Monday. I haven't taken a break yet, actually. It's been, what, six hours straight? I haven't taken... I'm just gonna go take a break and come back. That'll help. I'll be back in just a minute.
Okay, we're back. And ready to election truck. All right, I think this guy, this this valley box just has to summarize like, it don't even bother, buddy. It's looking like a sand sweep today. It's Vivat. Hey, what's up? Uh, that that kid, uh, Chris, told us that uh, uh, Halloween believes in a uh, darkner segregation or something. Uh, I taxes. We're staunch libertarians down here in the dark world. You, you, you see the idea, right? You once wrote a single 20,000 word chapter in half a day one time when you were a kid. You're a super fast typer. Typing is not the limiting factor here. How the fuck did you think of 20,000 words worth of content in half a day? Watched, no bother. And, um... <laughs> As as Naftablix leaving, they can pass Asgore, who's who's complaining about his ballot being spoiled because the candidate's name should be Sam's <laughs> instead of Sam's. <laughs> Warned us about those two's anti darkner agenda. Dark, no, Darkner. What's going on? This is the very ending of the fanfic. The Darkners are Posidists? What is that? I hope it's not like a Zeusidist. Sand sweeps the competition. He lost the election, but he's still got to sweep the opium addicts out of his shop. Uh, well, yeah, th I think the opium will be addressed in the, the post credit scene. Or maybe here during our, our sort of wrap-up. Obscure communist ideology about nuking the world. Why is it? Why do they still get to call it communism if they just want to nuke the world? I feel like communism implies a bit more structure than you'd need for that. Burger Pants is still the only opium user. Well, no, Pizza Pants is. Symmetric taxes, workplace discrimination, segregated bathrooms, the works. Your ob obscure ideas accumulated into a full story. Yeah, they kind of did. 
quite a lot of the mass of the writing is chat suggestions, really. I was worried about um, not taking enough input from chat for a time, but it seems like a lot, it, it very often gets stuck, like I'm thinking about what to do next and like chat moves it along, so it it really does speed up the process having the continuous suggestions. Uh, well, that's, uh, well, never mind. Have fun voting, I guess. Yeah, the, the whole Gasta rap was chat, that is very true. <laughs> As course says, Well, if it isn't the consequences of my actions. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Wrap it up. Where's the epic final boss fight with Onion Sun? Maybe Asgore still has to have that moment where he confronts Onion Sun. And it's just actual combat occurs. <laughs> I'm tempted just to make it the fucking ending of Metal Gear Rising. That would be somewhat funny. There's a lot to wrap up. Is there? I mean, there's... I feel like a lot of this isn't going to get, like, a serious conclusion. Like, fucking Mayor Holiday has adopted Nerdly t as her uh, replacement daughter son now. So, I'm not sure where Noelle's arc concludes unless she's just going to live with the Dreamers for the rest of her life. Uh, oh, shit. $20 from 7k. Thank you. Wow. Uh, first donation too. Thanks a lot. Um, Ralsei says, <laughs> "We sure had a lot of fun there today, but in the real world, reactionary politics, opium addiction, and voter fraud are no laughing matter. So I'm here to impart the very important lesson about is that Susie and Birdly? They're they're making out in the ditch." <laughs> I think that could actually be a, g a good way to end the fic, because, like, Rousey trying to deliver a PSA after he reincarnates from the plate of Denny's chicken nuggets. I'm gonna copy that, actually, and just stick it down here. Make Regan win. He's not even there. <laughs> I did briefly consider having Regan be the phone guy. He was on the list next to, like, Senator Armstrong and shit, you know? I considered a lot of options. Asgore's flower shop is still failing. Maybe Sans lowers his rent. Or, no, if Sans was the mayor, he wouldn't lower the rent, but he also just wouldn't ever bother sending an invoice or bothering him about it ever again, so... Uh, I guess he's just in, like, rent stasis for the next four years or whatever. The ending is completely forgotten about the opium crisis. Yeah, we're gonna reveal just at the very end that the entire opioid crisis was just um, burger pants, or pizza pants, consuming all the opium. And there's an entire, like, mafia subunit based in the town just because of how much fucking heroin uh, Pizza Pants does in his spare time. Oh no, the, the lore, I think it's coming back to me, the lore is that Pizza Pants is like um, a crazy like crypto trader. Like he makes uh, like hundreds of thousands of dollars a month on like Bitcoin stocks, but all that money goes toward the heroin habit and leaves uh, exactly zero dollars and zero cents for like rent. And so he still has to work at the pizza place. That's the lore. And somehow that has to get packed into, like, the post-credits. A 
and he and Sancho have a bunch of swords. I think if anything, we we set up like the the big boss battle with Onion San and Asgore, and then just cut away. <laughs> I don't feel like writing a fucking action scene. You know that those are such a pain in the ass to actually write. Napstablood drifted back toward the, <clears throat> the throng of sprawled cosplayers. Looking for a way out. What if Asgore is, uh, no, I said Asgore would be, um, complaining that his ballot was, uh, incorrect because it said Sans instead of Sam's. still the same secretary from City Hall who's running the um giving out the ballots I guess Loudly complaining to the mayor's secretary about his ballot being spoiled. Uh, Spamton is somewhere. Who is the phone guy? That's Onion Son. We're gonna get to it. Easier now. $5 from Odysseus. Thank you. Can this be after the Umris version of Deltarune Chapter 1 and the Titans seeing this nonsense is why the rest of the chapters never happen? <laughs> they just cancel the plot, decide the alternate universe isn't good enough to keep? <laughs> uh, I guess so. I, I don't really know when this is anymore, to be honest. I really don't know. Uh, I saw someone just delete a comment about Jetstream Sam. I'm really sad that I didn't get to read that. Oh well. Um, oh. See here now, it says the candidate's name is S-A-N-S Sands, clear as day. I know very well.
As a mayoral candidate myself, I pride myself- Oh. As a mayoral candidate, I pride myself in having a strong grasp on the competition at all times. So Jetstream Sam wins the election due to Sans being name being misspelled. <laughs> that's that's funny. <laughs> like you think it was just S A M, but no, it, the candidate is listed as Jetstream Sam. It was a really weird typo. It's <laughs> my middle name. Sans Jetstream Sam Delta Rune. Onion Son is a mech piloted by Senator Armstrong. <laughs> Sucks to be him, <laughs> Maps to Blick thought. The typo is S-A-N, short for onions. <laughs> uh, what is Spamton doing? <laughs> what, what the fuck is Spamton doing? Oh, oh, the toaster, right. Spamton is the toaster. It's, it's coming back. Sucks to be him next to Blick Thought and hovered past without making eye contact. This was easy since the secretary did not have eyes. Uh, oh, we didn't mention Asgore's outfit. Now dressed in flowing purple robes over burnished armor, who was loudly complaining to the mayor's secretary. Error Sands takes this look, a look at the world and dies out of shock. I don't know what the fuck Error Sands does in his spare time. I don't think Error Sands is visiting Umris. He got the memo to stay away from Umris. This isn't really even Umris, it's just my own fucking clusterfuck. I can't blame Umris for this. Do an Asgore outfit? Well, like a different one? I said Toriel was her Undertale self, so I thought Asgore should match that. Uh, 
Uh, I need the trademark. I'm pretty sure it was Samsung, right? Let me copy the symbol, Wikipedia, please. There it is. I did wonder briefly why Asgore was carrying a Samsung smart toaster with a knife stuck through it under his arm, but wasn't remotely tempted to ask. Jetstream Samsung. That's a reference to the previous joke. So, oh no, it was supposed to be a registered trademark after the n okay. I gotta keep it consistent. Why is the smart toaster's nose so big? Oh yeah. Yeah, the, the knife length. Wait, what was this last Spamton nose length? Uh, wait, nose. It was like a Tom Cruise length or something? God, I, I referenced nose twice in one scene with Spamton and neither time was it his nose. That's disturbing. Uh, yeah, it's two-thirds of a Tom Cruise, so we have to convert that into, uh, like, centimeters or something. Hang on. One point seven meters. So we can take that to, uh, one point nine meters, maybe? Um, and measure it in... Fuck, what haven't we used yet? Oh, this this is now the time to describe it as a spam to nose link. That's it. That was the final. Okay, that, we got it. with a one spam to nose long knife stuck through it under his arm. Perfect. It comes full circle, it really does. It was actually approaching, um, it, like it was an infinite series converging to a fixed point of one spam to nose link. That's like pi or e or something. It's a, a, a fixed constant. The nose doesn't actually diverge into infinity, it it gets infinitely close to the one value. How long is a spamton? Uh long enough to uh steal your money, I don't know. It's like the Da Vinci code, somehow, yeah, sure. I, I have no idea what you mean by that, but yes, sure, I'll concede it is indeed like the Da Vinci code. It's like Xenoblade, yeah, sure. I, I don't know what you mean by that, but I'll concede that it is indeed like Xenoblade. I'm getting fired up, Poira! Banning sword! Love Xenoblade. <laughs> it's like LA Noir. I'm not doing it again. Don't forget me! You don't! Stop me. <laughs> You're gonna like stunlock me quoting Xenoblade for the rest of my life here. Uh, this is the last Halloween scene I should describe a tiniest bit of her actual anatomy. <laughs> well, that's where you're wrong, buddy. Halloween in the Dark World is just an anthro reindeer again. She just turns into a uh, Fanon Mayor Holiday. <laughs> I 
Okay, uh, where to go from here? Does Spamton ever find the exit? Like, you can't leave. It, they can only leave when Chris seals the Dark World, right? So, Napstapluck actually can't leave. Or maybe Napstablet can leave. Oh wait, this canonizes the fan art because the poster just shows what Halloween looked like during this one scene. <laughs> they all have to watch the final boss fight. Uh, well, there doesn't like you have to think about it. Um, Onion Son tried to get Asgore into power because um, they knew that Asgore wouldn't do fracking. And that was it, but Sans also isn't going to do fracking, so... Uh, the confrontation between Onion Son and Asgore has to be, like, separate somehow. It's, like, personal. Asgore puts the toaster down absentmindedly and leaves it there. <laughs> That's really funny. Maybe Napstablet can just leave, yeah, because th they weren't transformed by the Dark World's power. They can just leave, but no one else can. It just doesn't notice them leave. Uh, alright. Oh shit, that's, that's a stupid suggestion, but it actually may work into a scene. Asgore throws the toaster into the river and Onion San gets pissed. I could actually see that working, right? Because, like, we could just have the one scene of Asgore just kind of, like, sobering up, realizing, like, how, mu how much he's fucked up, and he just sort of throws the toaster into the river. Um, wait, but how does the toaster get back to the light world without turning back into Spamton, though? That's the real question. And then Onion Sun confronts him, is sort of what I was getting at, yeah. Did Spamton die? Well, Spamton turned back into the toaster in the Dark World. Spamton's soul gets left behind. It's... <laughs> his soul is, like, eaten by one of the titans off-screen? Uh, 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 how does that work? He transfers his soul via email? <laughs> to who, I wonder, though? I mean, sorry, to whom? Spamton needs some karmic punishment. What if Jevil just flies in at supersonic speed and murks him for no reason? Or maybe Spamton jumps ship. He's like, uh... He, he, what, what am I thinking of? Like, as soon as things go south, he's just like, Well, I'm off to help someone else now. Yeah, maybe, I, I think that's the play. Spamton's soul just, like, disappears into the ether because Asgore is no longer a viable candidate. He becomes Sansa's campaign mode. <laughs> that's actually, I think that's my favorite suggestion. Is he just immediately, <laughs> he just joins Sansa's team. Wait, does that imply that he would become mayor? Because Sans is just going to like abdicate on day one. Or no, maybe, maybe Sans does stay mayor. I don't know. Um, it's, it's kind of funny if, I don't know, Sans just keeps him employed as the um, the replacement janitor for the shop? <laughs> that's funny, actually. Spamton runs a shop in the Dark World. I think that works. That's that's where Spamton ends up. It's perfect. Alright, that's it. Uh, 
Finally, the Spamton Mayor fic we all wanted. After looking around for a while, they couldn't see any exit sign in sight. And so opted to go with their uh, standard tactic. Uh, and opted to go with their standard tactic of levitating slowly upward until they had escaped the current social impasse. Surprisingly, this worked. They went. They then bent. Uh, they then went back home and watched Storage Wars. <laughs> All right. Scene ends. That's it. Oh yeah, Asgore decides to throw a vote for the barrier pin into the river and pisses off Onion Sun. Th that could also work. I think that the toaster is better, because like Asgore could uh, leave the dark world but still just have the toaster, because Spamton's soul uh, departed. Or no. Wait, the, the theology of this is getting confusing, because if Spamton is now sand as a campaign manager, then that implies, like, where did the toaster come from at that point? Is the toaster just created mass? That seems like it doesn't obey physics, but... It's called a visual metaphor, damn it, yeah. following day. Let, let's do a brief, like, narration crawl here. Asgore sat at the lake shore with his feet in the water and stared into the steely waters. Sands had won the election by a landslide after the revelation of an entire new popu <laughs> voting populace. Uh, heretofore unknown. That's a weird word. Don't get to bust that one out too often.
There it is, under Vermont law. Um, isn't Sans selling opium? Uh, no. <laughs> that was never really canonized. Um, Asgore makes one weird comment about Sans being a dope head, which I don't even- that never went anywhere. I might just delete that if I, like, revise this for AO3. Um, it, it was implied that, like, opium pants was shooting up in Sans' bathroom, but he wasn't actually directly involved with that. It is, however, canon for some reason that, um... Oh, I used water twice in a row. Damn, you're right. Damn it. Mm. Let's say sky. Guy can also be steely. Samson, no, Spamton. Spamton having immediately jumped ship and apply work as Sans as vice mayor. After the events of yesterday morning, Man, the till their most days. Well, Sans filed paperwork. You're actually getting emotional at this ending. It's like it's basically just a text crawl here. Asgore's feet are in the sand. It's better if they're in the water, though. You want steely depths? I guess that's all right. It's, it's more foreshadowing for Onion Son, I guess. Was a long journey. Yes, it really is the end of an era. He uses another toaster that is to him metaphorically spammed. <laughs> um, actually, let's skip a week just so all this makes sense.
Um, give an update to the situation with Halloween. Uh, I think we've implied enough about, you know, nerdly changing his name to Des. We, we've set up the Umrus Canon nicely. Um, I, I might want to follow up with Noel somehow. Like, what what, what is Noel going to do? <laughs> Halloween was never seen again. Oh, yeah, she immediately goes on to run a state senator. Yeah, yeah, okay, that, that's it. Halloween had, within three days of losing her position as mayor, become a state senator. Uh, yeah, Umrus Cannon states that Noel does have to date Chris, but that's such an unpleasant <laughs> fact that I'm just going to leave it out. Uh, it's still canon compliant if I just don't specify. Um, I might make a video reading this whole thing. I might do that. I, I, how do you become a senator? Is that a, an appointed position in the US? Or do you get voted in? I haven't forgotten the Rousey speech. You get voted in. No, it's inherited? Voted? Elected? Okay, it is elected. But she was beaten by Bernie Sanders? I think she defeated Bernie Sanders. Wait, is Bernie Sanders from Vermont? That doesn't really make sense. Oh yeah, Vermont was annexed by Canada. All right, yeah, sure. Uh, let, let's continue that lore. That lore. Um, wait, what province? I don't even know where Vermont is on a map. But what province is it close to? Oh, it's New England. Vermont. Um, I, I can't even see it on this map. Oh, there it is. Oh shit, is it underneath Quebec? Oh my god, it actually borders Quebec. Terrifying. Uh, okay, I guess that's what you get. Um, I don't know if MP, uh, Montreal has its own MP, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll look up the, the specifics of the, um, the, the government system later. Of course she was in the Bloc Québécois. Where she represented the Bloc Québécois party. We need a footnote for this one. Um, footnote, 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 insert footnote. Um, I don't know. 
actually there we go that's better Vermont having been annexed by Quebec shortly following its schism from Canada in the 1990x Stanley Cup riots Uh, yeah, I guess, um, Noel just gets adopted by Toriel. That's the only thing I can think of. Oh, how'd I get back there? Uh... Noel moves in with Rudy and sleeps on the hospital floor. That's way better. Holy shit. Forcing her to move in with her father at the hospital. <laughs> Does that make Chris and Noel siblings? <laughs> what, because Asgore fucked Rudy? I, I don't think that's how it works necessarily. I'm gonna say they don't even get divorced, because uh, no one gets divorced in Umar's canon. Like, Rudy and Mayor Holiday are still uh, married somehow. Despite living in different cities and not speaking to each other. Now, the Stanley Cup riots is where it's at, trust me. That's the only time anything scary happens in Canada. At least since, you know, the old days. Yeah, <laughs> a, a lot of scary stuff happened back then. Uh, is that everyone mopped up now? Asgore can now throw in the, um, uh, a vote for walls is a vote for freedom pin. Uh, $5 from Algie Satchel, thank you, to say Asgore lost the election. Uh, after Asgore lost the election, Honduras needed to, uh, a new talent to sponsor, so they picked Gaster to become the new best rapper in Honduras. <laughs> Alright, that's going in. Um, does anyone in chat happen to know, hypothetically, if Honduras uh, was overthrown by a bloody civil war, uh, what new government would likely be put in place? If no one knows, that's okay. I'll just say communist.
which was cool. You would say royalist? <laughs> I think it's kind of funny if it's communist, actually. A theocracy. <laughs> Uh, oh yeah, Nerdly went with Kaluuya instead. Well, uh, Nerdly is now Des. Uh, she forgot to buy plane tickets for both Noel and Des before leaving, forcing Noel to move in with her father at the hospital. <laughs> there we go. Why is nerdly Des? <laughs> this is getting lynchy <laughs> I'm just so glad. Nerdly was the stupidest inclusion in the whole fic, so I don't feel any guilt about um, having him be legally adopted by... or... I guess not officially adopted, he just changed his name to Des to gain approval from Mayor Holiday. Where does Des live? Uh, with with um, Mayor Holiday in her uh, Montreal resort. Where uh, he continues to speak French in sign language. Oh, I used following twice? Oh yeah, yeah. In the wake. Um, or, uh... Following the collapse of Honduras, catalyzed by Asgore's electoral failure, the fledgling com communist regime drafted Gaster as their official state rapper, which was cool. Alright. Kaloween left her husband too, I, I guess so, yeah. Uh, no, Des is nerdly, not Noel. That's it's different. It needs to end on a somber note. It's probably not going to. It'll be at least a little bit somber. After thinking through all these events sequentially with the best grammar he could muster, Asgore cast his eyes down toward the pin clasped in his hand. Uh, A lot of from mooks, thanks. It should somehow end with Chris calling Sans dad. Somehow, maybe I don't know. It's like we were, we already have this whole fucking Rousey PSA queued up here. <laughs> based, that's based dead. <laughs> 
Oh, we, we have the toaster metaphor? Alright, yeah, I see what you mean. Why did I capitalize that? Ah, oh, God. Five bucks from LG Satchel. Thank you. It says uh, that Halloween left Des behind, but it, you said Des is with Halloween, so which one was it? She forgot to buy plane tickets for both Noel and. Oh, no, this is ambiguously worded. The idea is that she only bought a plane ticket for one, but the sentence also sort of seems like it's for both. That's just an English fail moment. I'll say, there we go. That that fixes it. Thank you for pointing that out. Well, it, it's not. It, it specifies. It forces Noel to move in with her father. Um, okay, Asgore cast his eyes downward to the Samsung dumb toaster in his lap, which was not in any way inhabited by the soul or consciousness of Spamten, but nonetheless held a strong metaphorical association with him in Asgore's mind. clenched his teeth and lobbed the appliance as far as he could into the lake. some poetic way to describe the lake, I'm sure. It was quickly swallowed by the... the glistening water, the... <laughs> the formerly fracked depths. The faintly oil-slick water, how about that? <laughs> How are we planning to do the onion sound phone reveal? Right now. It's like throwing the bomb into the fairy fountain in Zelda. I'm the true final boss, you hear? Yeah. Being onion sound would be lame. Stop it. Stop it. Hey, stop. Uh, I will not. They're not actually going to have a boss fight, don't worry. <laughs> no, 
Uh, how do I transition to this, though? Just say a good while. Eventually the sky began to lose its light and he climbed to his feet. Believe. Before he could turn though. Nice toaster, you hear? Nice toaster you got there, buddy. Was I doing onion sum with all caps before? Where the fuck does Onion San speak? Oh no, it's it's just normal text, thank god. Nice toaster, buddy! Don't you know it's illegal to dump here, you hear? Asgore's pupils dilated. Around the place the toaster had sank into the lake before. Uh, is it sunk? Or sank? Had sunken? I'm just gonna say sank. Around the place the toaster sank into the lake. We're now protruding a mass of tentacles like white pillars. Onion Sun should mention the campaign truck spammed and drove in. Why are there three past tense forms of sync? I don't know. I just had that thought myself. I was like, I don't want to think about this right now. All holding knives. Onion Sun doesn't actually have any beef with Asgore, is the thing. Uh, it, it's just that Asgore would be angry with Onion San for manipulating him, potentially. Nano machine, son! 
They respond to physical trauma, you hear? Uh, yeah, something like that. Like, ghosts is better. I like that. Yeah, I like ghosts. Uh, the sentence is jank as fuck. I don't know how else to put it. Split the sentence. They towered over the water like ghosts. Yes. That voice, Asgore whispered. This doesn't really make sense, because Asgore was present at the debate where Onion Son already was. So no, that, that, it can't be that voice. It's like, I was using text-to-speech, you hear? Like, the whole time Onion Son was just using Microsoft Sam, and uh, Asgore didn't recognize that it was text-to-speech, because <laughs> he doesn't use the computers. Make Onion Son repeat a word they used during the calls. I don't think Asgore never really said much. That there weren't really very many phone calls at all. I think um, if I were to do like a director's cut of this, I would actually just splice in one or two more phone calls just to like maintain that plot beat a little bit, so it's not just a such an ass pull here. Like I don't think anyone even remembers that there was a phone guy. If you were just reading. Hmm. <laughs> Another silhouette. It can't keep happening. There we go. Uh, slowly a dark shape formed between them, becoming clearer as the mass approached the shore. Finally, the amorphous shape of Onion San emerged to face Asgore. You know where is Gore? He's just gonna monologue for a while. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, add a translator's note to specify that dark shape does not have a known German translation. The translator's really shit. Isn't there? That's an Undertale quit of some sort, isn't it? It, it is not known. Oh, that, I'm thinking of the Deltarune. Um, it, it's unknown if it's safe for teachers to eat these, referring to an orange. Same joke.
Okay, perfect. It is unknown if there's any direct German translation for the term dark shape. You know, Ice Gore, when all this started, I just wanted Halloween to stop fracking my land! You, I just wanted to protect my home, you hear? You can understand that, you hear? It's the same reason you ran for mayor. You hear? <laughs> I don't know if they all need you hears, just lots of them. My land, yeah. The music is fitting, yeah. Powerful stuff. Asgore's jaw hung slack. He didn't understand what was happening. All energy seemed to seep from his limbs. I feel like you know is you hear adjacent. It's hard, you know. Living in a town where no one knows your name because you live underwater. What's an actual oil company like Exxon Mobil? Is that just the name of the pipeline? Exxon Mobil. There it is. That's a weird spelling. Devastating. Because, well, they can't see it! Because it's underwater, you hear? Onion Song returns the toaster to Asgore and says, You're gonna carry that weight! <laughs> It sounds like I read the message, but I just ad-libbed that, uh, actually, uh, the part about carrying that weight. <laughs> Exxon Mobil stocks are gonna plummet after this goes in AO3. Just like, uh, Eli Lilly's stock tank after that verified Twitter user promised that we're gonna give free insulin out.
I feel like the background music is dictating the entire tone of this conversation, and that, that's fine with me. that if anyone else was in power maybe things would be different If they were any good at mayoring. Just as long as they weren't her, you hear? Now Asgore catches on. Asgore finally felt a modicum of sense return to him. It was... you? On the phone! Onion Sun shouted back. Yep, that was me. It's not illegal or nothing. my sea lawyer <laughs> you hear but, but your voice asgore stammered This feels like Blue Shell Incident dialogue, which I guess is because it's sort of like Metal Gear dialogue. Maybe. Onion Sun has a smartphone. Yeah. Flowey dialect. Don't you recognize Microsoft, Sam? It's like that one Deltarune YouTuber, you hear? I don't think Halfbird actually uses Microsoft Sam for the record, it's it's some different thing. Uh, and I know that because of how hard it was to get a Discord bot that could do a satisfactory voice during the Delta cast. 
Huffbrand does not use Microsoft Sam on your son. <laughs> score set. Uh, okay, I, I don't think I'm actually going to put that in. I gotta say though, Asgore. One thing I didn't expect with you on the job. Was a dismembered human corpse landing on my head, you hear? Aren't they using the British one they used in the 2016 MLG videos? I don't know. It was, it was, I want to say David. No, no, David's like the uh, um, Microsoft Sam is Bonzi Buddy, and and Microsoft David is the one that talks like I imitate the police officers talking like in Earthbound. Um, I I have some familiarity with them, but I don't I don't know. You're doing math work to this with the onion sign voice? Jesus Christ. I, I don't think I could count a stack of beans with this in the background. Like, it would be that distracting. But I guess that's my fault too. Hooking you up with that Spamton guy. They quick. Uh, they briefly trailed off into a thousand-yard stare before re immediately recovering. Uh, another two bucks from Elvis Satchel. Thank you. A person dropped their b blackberry in the lake. How does that tie in, though? How does the blackberry tie in? Blackberry. I, I gotta keep momentum here. I gotta. I gotta keep momentum. It's the the words are flowing right now. I just gotta just gotta keep going. But but that's my fault too. You hear? When I looked for the- that Spamton guy I met, when I looked for the song at the bottom of the lake, you hear? I knew it was bad news! But I did it anyway, you hear? I guess I didn't see any other way, you hear? I 
I've never met a good person who came out of a toaster. <laughs> Me neither, shit. Onion Son is the guy who drove Spamton insane? No, that's someone else. That's the knight who is not Gaster because he's a rapper in Honduras. He paused. Anyway, I guess I just thought you should know, you hear? And also, you dropped this. <laughs> she feels kind of hypocritical saying wordlessly after monologuing for like two pages, but whatever. It's it's a uh, locally wordless. Things worked out okay in the end, but you're gonna carry that weight, you hear? That's so fucking stupid. I have not even watched Cowboy Bebop for the record. This is absurd. I could end this with an entry 17 quote. I have the power, I could do that for no reason. The question is, does the fic deserve to end with an entry 17 quote? <laughs> Jin San threw the toaster into Asgore's face at 100 miles per hour, killing him instantly. What a great ending. It would not fit. Yeah, that's that's about right. Well, Asgore said to himself, that sure was the election trucking of all time. And then it ends. <laughs> Onion Sun drops the truck on the shore, crushing Asgore to death. Uh, yeah. Well, that just happened. <laughs> That's Noel's line. What do you two think? Asgore, who are you talking to? He looks at the camera. We we end with the shit post regardless. We have our RAL PSA down here.
I think that maybe that's a fine way to end it. The Cowboy Bebop quote. From that day forward, Asgore devoted himself to the cause of anarcho-communism. How about that? He was later assassinated by the CIA. <laughs> he was tragically assassinated by the CIA 20 years later. Okay, maybe that's the- yeah, sure. Now we get the real CPs. Did San stop charging him rent? Oh yeah, I have to mention that. God, this is a long a little- oh, it's not that long actually. You send invoices for rent? No, you just you just get paid. There we go. And I meticulously forgot to ever mail Asgore eviction notices. Remove the Oxford comma to disambiguate the sentence slightly. Um, The moral is never be involved in politics ever, I think. As Gore finally rests as night falls. It's a, it's a good line, but it's, you know, it's, it's, it's nothing compared to he was killed by the CIA. All right. in the Denny's west of the police station. Uh, maybe the, the Denny's went out of business the day, like the instant, the minute after Chris and Noel ate there, and so no one was employed to clean up the nuggies. of dino nuggets that had been left uncleared after the restaurant's declaration of bankruptcy three minutes after Chris and Noel finished their meal. And it... Ah, shit. Finally leaked enough darkness.
finally to reach a critical mass. A critical ludo narratively significant mass. <laughs> Let's do that. Ludo, Google doesn't help with this. It, it doesn't want the adverb, but it accepts the normal noun. That's fucked up. Google, come on. Uh, another five bucks from Algae Satchel. Damn. Thanks. Uh, credits writer Andrew Cunningham, illustrated by Mooks and Outsin, produced by Algae Satchel, nerdly MCHS Productions. Uh, something like that. Yeah. Otherwise known as Twitch chat. It's the middle of the day. Everyone, a manager says we're bankrupt everyone out. I could see that happening at a McDonald's in real life. Like, franchise owner walks in, goes, Hey guys, uh, we're out of business. Um, we can't, we're, I'm not paying you overtime. Everyone off shift now. And the whole restaurant would be decommissioned within three days. When did we get paid? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, the now... Irrevocably... The now irrevo irrevocably soggy outer shell of the nuggies bubbled and churned as the deceased chicken tissue was flitted with determination um, and or darkness. from the churning mass of meat and breading. Do we, does it work like, we, we established that you can use a chicken egg, that, that counts as enough of a soul to resurrect a darkener. Does, does the chicken flesh have enough residual soul power in it to form Rousey into the light world? And that's why he has like special powers. Yeah. Okay. Sure. One guy in chat said yeah. So that's that's canon now. Um, The residual soul power residing in the chicken was apparently enough to facilitate um, the being's uh, immediate reincarnation into a lightener.
The creature turned to face the camera. Uh, I'm Ralsei. I sure had a lot of fun here today, but in the real world, reactionary politics, opium addiction, and voter fraud are no laughing matter. So I'm here to impart a very important lesson about... Um, apparently it cut off. I don't remember it cutting off there. Maybe it did, though. Sorry, it's to hyperbole and a half. Uh, wasn't there one last thing? Oh, opioid pants. Yes, we have to reveal that opioid pants. Um. What, what's the term? Critical enjoyment? Is that- I feel like that's a term. Officially problematic fanfiction. Uh, maybe the, the building is immediately detonated by um, a shootout between the, the police and the Frogget Mafia. <laughs> Oh, it was uh, Susie and Birdly. Yeah, but they hang out at QC's, so, you know. Uh, is that an Anita Sarkeesian quote? I have no idea. It's staying in regardless. It's it's their sting operation. Undyne's been uh, tracking the the ma the mafia's dealings for months, and somehow it took this long to figure out um, the, to catch one single drug deal in progress. Consumption. Whatever. I don't have to quote Anita Sarkeesian. That was never the point. This is my own quote. This is an Andrew Cunningham quote. Undyne resurrected herself from the pile of ash? Ah, uh, shit. It's Napstabluk, I guess. It has to be Napstabluk. <laughs> Actually, Napstabluk is fucking invincible here. The bullets just go through them. Like... <laughs> yeah, Undyne's dead. Oops, I forgot. What happens if you die in the dark world? Do you get resurrected still? I don't know. Uh, Undyne was killed by Toriel in the dark world off screen. Um, as a reference to that one swinky box thumbnail, I guess. Bring him to the greasy restaurant floor. <laughs> kind of dumbass for the, <laughs> the fucking mafia are dealing drugs literally kitty corner from the police station. <laughs> That's how they finally get caught. <laughs> the 
This version of Ralsei is one inch tall? I, I don't know where you got that from. When describing all homeworld dark, uh, uh yeah, the, all the dark world outfits is when Undyne died, yeah. It was formed from a nugger? What, what, what about this makes you think it preserves the scale of the nugget? I, w I wonder, want to know, like, what process in your brain is making you assume that the, the nugget being brought to life via the power of determination magic implies that the nugget is the same size. I'm just curious. Uh, Napstablook sustained fire from two carfuls of frogget mafiosas. Um, what's up? Does police use Glocks? Whatever, service weapon. They felt no, no need to die for cover as the bullets didn't didn't actually interact with their incorporeal body. Naps to uh, five dollars from LG Satchel to say Naps to look looked at the window and it was just wait is that truck filled with fifty tons of heroin? That uh, basically yeah, I think that's the only reason that they would get caught at this point. Just pulling up with bales of uh, heroin uh, out, directly outside the police station. Good thing the criminals don't have ghost bullets. No one does. It, it's unknown whether it's even possible to kill Naps to Blick in Undertale. Like, you can't do it. Even on the genocide route, it doesn't work. So, yeah. After months pursuing cold uh, trail after cold trail. Nastablick had finally made their big bust. Witnessing After witnessing 50 kilo bales of raw heroin being loaded into the back of a civilian's car directly outside the police station window. Uh, luckily they had looked up from uh, what is Napsablik watching at the police station? Any ideas? 
Is there going to be a final read through? Uh, not tonight. This is an eight hour stream. Uh, I I'm thinking like Ludwig or something. Mythbusters. <laughs> That's good. I, I love Mythbusters. I, li I like the idea that Napstub like just watches like old Discovery Channel reruns. Napster Blix Frex was a Star Trek person. Uh, Mythbusters is too dear to my heart. Several minutes later, once the dust of all seven frogets had scattered to the wind, uh, um, Napsablet covered toward the civilian car. How do I sum this up? This isn't really much of a reveal. It's just like Lamau, it's it's burger pants basically. <laughs> Isn't Jamie Heineman from Mythbusters? <laughs> He's like a fictional character who is invented by the show? Yeah. I'm pretty sure he is. Why is there gunfire? Uh, you know. That's how that's how you bust uh, the mafia, I think. Curled in the driver's seat. Curled in the driver's seat was pizza pants. Over the subsequent weeks of tri court tr hearings. It was revealed that Pizza Pants, whose legal name was in fact Opioid Pants, have a line about Susie and Birdly. Uh, May okay, I'll get to it. <laughs> the real hero for the war on drugs was Navstablick, and all they needed was uh, a Glock. Parents set him up for failure. <laughs> yeah.
Uh, now, Harold was medically allowed to smoke weed because of his uh, war injury. Um, we now know which war Harold lost his arm in. It was the um, the 1990X Stanley Cup riots. The one in ten hometown users who do opioids is a statistical error. Opioid pants who does 1,000 pounds of opium. <laughs> it's Spiders Georg, yeah. That perfect. It his legal name is Opioid Pants Georg. Opioids. Opioid Pants Georg. Jesus. There we go. Uh, using millions of dollars gained through Bitcoin mining. Um, <laughs> How do I even articulate this? A six figure per month passive income. From fortuitous early investment in Bitcoin. Opioid pants. had single-handedly funded leaving exactly zero dollars left to pay rent. How do you even spell this? It's like a, a punctuation tongue twister.
he was sentenced to five years in federal prison. <laughs> <laughs> Only days later was Jerry's mansion raided, uh, says LG Satchel for $2. Uh, I, I guess it would have been, yeah. Jerry's mansion was raided uh, days later. No, this is Terry's. Uh, Terry's mansion was raided days later following the statements by Asgore Dreamer to the police. But no evidence was ultimately found of wrongdoing. It turned out that he just really respected drug dealers. There we go. We're really making the most of the finale. <laughs> Here, here's your Umris line, guys. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't want Birdley's name. Um, it, Birdley has to be explaining, like, the legal proceedings of court to Susie. Uh, how do I... Write that. There we go. Birdly explained the intricacies of the legal process to Susie while occasionally attempting to grope her breasts. Perfect. Umer's canon. Birdly explains court using an American psycho metaphor. <laughs> You, you, you joined for this? That was like the last line of the fanfiction. Like literally the last line. It's over. You, you missed it. <laughs> you missed it all. Yeah, that's, um, I think that's it. That's an election trucking. But that's it. I don't know what it is. I'm, I'm like shell shocked now. I don't know what this means anymore to have finished Electron Trucking as the, uh, I think this is like the, the ending song of One Shot plays. Very fitting. Breasts is the last word in the fic. Uh, who's keeping track? I don't know of any dictionaries of the last words of written media. That would be embarrassing though. There's fan art. Oh yeah, let's do the fan art. Bada bing, bada boom. Um. All right. I'm gonna look in the election trucking thread first here. Okay. We got this thing. We have a clip of the Navy SEAL copy pasta. That's good. We have a clip of something else. Uh, let's check the Arts and Crafts channel. Is that a Spamton sniper? 
I, f I forget what the context for this even was. <laughs> Let's, we can try to interpret this together. Um, I'm gonna show, I, I know the stream is, the overlay is on, I'm just, I'm lining them all up now. Um, is, that's a, okay, that's like a video or a gif or something? Hang on. That, that's, that's one there. Oh, we have, um, a censored poster from Mooks, okay. Uh, I'll leave that one as a reveal. That's an interesting snapshot of the experience there. Another one. Uh, there's there's one lonely piece of work posted in the middle of the election trucking stuff that has to specify that it's not election trucking related. R.I.P. the Glad Hatter. I think this is the stream? Maybe? I don't... It's something. Uh, okay, another one. Another one. Another another one. This might be the most fan wick, uh, work after a single fic so far. Or a single stream. I'm, I know I'm not showing it, I'm just lining it up in Firefox so I can blast through it without missing any. Because uh, if I start looking at it, I'm going to get distracted and it's going to make me like miss one or something. Um, and the video. Don't forget the video. Where's the video? There it is. Okay. I'll do the video first. So here we have a, an Asgore Dreamer American flag gift. That's wonderful. These, like this wouldn't even be identifiable as related to the stream, except for the context here. I love those where it's like it's 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 stealth fan art, as I've called it before. That one is by uh, J S Savage, or J Savage rather, which which says it's made by someone else. Sunny is the star, so it's an indirect gif of some sort. Okay, we got that one. Oh, I, I wasn't showing it still, shit. Or did I show it? I can't remember, dude. I don't remember if I showed it. I did, okay, good. I, I immediately forgot if I took off the overlay. Anyway, well, let's look at the actual art here. So first off, this one was from... Oh shit. The, pe the people who made the art was part of the Discord. Uh, I, I, I fucked this up. Hang on, I fucked it up. Okay, this one was in the thread, and it was by... This was Shadow of Roserade. So they've taken a break from writing to now make some art. We have a uh, mayor crown, sans with the mayor crown, a, a redacted Halloween portrait, and sans refusing to deal with taxes. Perfect. That's a wonderful summary of the conclusion. Truly a wonderful summary. All right, and then. This is an algae satchel, what I referred to as sniper spam tin. I couldn't quite figure out what it was supposed to represent, unless it's just spam tin on top of the barrier, like fending off the drug cartels, which I... Maybe that's, that's it, actually. It, which is pretty good. <laughs> spam tin in the war on drugs. I'm joining the war on drugs. On the side of drugs. Very spamton. Uh, what we got next? We have, we have a, a bunch of shit. This one is from uh, VT Holmes. So that's Prunzel eating a plate of spaghetti with their pupil, or or his pupil, I think in this case. Uh, nerdly molding and coping and seething and farting and shitting as usual. Um, 
and Chris and Spamton having strafe with... Is Spamton holding a crossbow? What the fuck is that? I'm going to assume that's like a high-powered hunting crossbow. Oh no, that's his nose. That's his fucking nose. <laughs> I didn't notice that it connected to his face. It's just a rifle. And or a shotgun. Please read the... Do oh, I missed the donation. Sorry, Wolf Sode. We have $8. Thank you. Uh, play vote for the barrier sound again. One more time. I'll do it. Okay. At maximum volume. Anyone who doesn't want their ears blown out, turn down the volume now. You're going to be exposed to the full power in three, two, one. A vote, 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 vote for the barrier is a vote for freedom. Vote Asgore. Vote Asgore. 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 For the barrier is a vote. It was still louder on my end because I have the uh, desktop volume turned down a bit, I think. But there you go. The full power, dude. Yeah. Um, all right, and, uh, on the topic, thank you everyone, like, so much for this kind of a ridiculous amount of donations that I've been getting on these streams, and I, I don't know exactly what's compelling people to, to throw so much money out for, uh, for election trucking, but, like, thank you, the, um, like, people have spent an incredible amount of money, like, especially, like, Algae Satchel, shout out to you, uh, I don't know how you're funding that, but, like, holy shit, dude, thank you. Um... And, okay, we got uh, another iteration. I think this is um, the, the censored version of the Mooks' poster where they've replaced Halloween with some... Well, an Umris, in fact, uh, of some eldritch monstrosity, which is ideal. That's wonderful, Mooks. I'm, I'm glad you, uh, you, you humored my weird demands. Um... There was also a, a slightly touched up version of the, the poster, but it looks exactly the same as far as I can tell. I think it's just like a, a pixel was fixed or something. We have uh, Dino Nuggy <laughs> Ralsi. <laughs> uh, what, really just wonderful. Um, the, the, there was a really emergent property of this stream was like the, the the dino nuggies the denny's was a chat suggestion the dino's nuggies was a chat suggestion and ralse forming from them also i feel like was a chat suggestion so we're like three layers deep into nonsense here but it's good the result is good and that one was by hang on lilac weather from the discord wonderful oh and yet an, another one actually from the same person here is uh Maybe the weirdest scenario I've seen illustrated, like, it's Velma Noel with nerdily eating a bunch of Claritin, which is, I, I think, an illustration of two suggestions from chat that didn't even get included in the fic. It's just these abstract, the Velma wasn't even a suggestion, it was someone in chat misinterpreted me reading another message as writing Noel saying jinkies. It it's that abstract, but, but that's wonderful. Um... The, that figure of birdly eating the Claritin was me when I was in Little League Baseball, for reference. I pounded that stuff back. Um, what we got next? Cat says, I'm going to miss this. I am too. Like, uh, I am eager to do different streams. Because this has it's gone on for a while. Like, I still enjoy it. I, I haven't really felt burnt out at all, really. Surprisingly. Uh, but, like, I... I feel the need to do something else at this point. And, uh, there's- I probably am going to- this was too much effort to, like, not retroactively justify by gold plating, so... <laughs> I probably will at some point do a whole, like, read-through of this and- with, like, you know, decent audio and, and all the voices and stuff, and upload that, so... W wait for that to eventually appear, I guess. There'll be more fanfiction someday. Yeah, I, I love this fanfiction shit. It's good. Uh, by the way, Goat Mom Destroyer of Drugs. <laughs> this is dropped from the ceiling and is going to be your tutorial boss for this Souls game. That's good. She has a sword for some reason, too. <laughs> I'm not sure why. But that's from Algae Satchel again. Uh, another $8 from Wolf Sode. Thank you. you. You really 
forking over in these last couple minutes. Thank you. As I said on the first stream, good work, everyone. We did great and all should feel ashamed. Exactly. Couldn't, couldn't have said it better myself. Um, this really was a collaboration. Like, it's not a nominal attribution to Twitch chat. Like, um... A whole ton of like the good ideas in this fic came directly from the chat. Uh, I don't think I could have come up with like half of these on my own, and even if I could, it would have taken like many, many times longer, and I probably would have gotten bored way before finishing it. So th this was not at all possible without the chat. Uh, what else we got? This is a piece of modern art here. Uh, the fucking unsupported image pop-up for when I copy-pasted in the link to the Japanese Knife Guys channel. Uh, that's good. A real banger. We have Tyson brand Dino Nuggets. Apparently those exist. I've never seen- I've never heard of Dino Nuggets for the record. I've never heard of such a thing existing, but um, it didn't take much to convince me that it was real. Um, the stream is sponsored by Algae Satchel, clearly. Um, <laughs> Tiny, the world's smallest JPEG <laughs> of Sans cooking craft dinner. Jesus, that, that's a, such a small picture. How did you even get a picture of a kitchen that small? That's impressive. Um, some more uh, absurdly tiny clip art of uh, a chocolate milk, a waffle, a poppy. I can't even tell what that is. I literally don't know what this picture is. It's like five pixels across and the jello knife. Um, here's a Toriel, or I guess this is Chris's health bar after... No, that's that's not Elden Ring, that's a Dark Souls health bar. I was gonna say after leveling Vigor a shit ton, but... Um, maybe the bar gets bigger faster in uh, Dark Souls. And that's... is that a Bloodborne health bar from Toriel? I, I don't know. It might be a Bloodborne. I, I, I don't recognize that. It's not a banana, it's a jello knife, clearly. That's really cringe, Mom. Apparently Toriel drops 365,000 souls. Which is uh, not quite as much as the final boss of Elden Ring. But still respectable. Uh, another five dollars from Algie Satchel to to explain the origin of the donations. You're donating more money. Holy shit! Okay, uh, I found some money from a summer job I did a few years ago that I forgot to spend. This is what I spent it on. The whole backstory. What you just found money? Just like you like in a mattress, and you're like, well, I gotta get rid of this somehow as soon as possible. I guess I'll give it to this dipshit on the internet. What a world! What what an interesting world we live in. That. Th that's wonderful. I mean, I I'm glad you decided to dump it on me instead of a different asshole on the internet. And also, it's lucky you found it, I guess. Uh, yeah, and by summer job, you do, of course, mean dealing drugs, I assume, because otherwise, it's a lot of money. I don't know. Uh, I, I assumed you were just one of those, like, the, the mythical class of suspiciously wealthy furry, even though it's unclear whether you're a furry or not uh, at all. But, you know, just like people who are like are a heart surgeon as a day job and make $800,000 a year and then just spend their days shit posting on like uh, 4chan and, and looking at Forfinity and commissioning furry artwork. Like, that's a type of dude, I think. Uh, we, there's still more fan art, though. This is just Margaret Thatcher with antlers. <laughs> Perfect ideal, frankly, by Regan Morris. Uh, thank you for that. Margaret Thatcher is dead. Dang dong, the wicked bitch is dead. Shoutouts to Margaret Thatcher. This is, uh, there was a caption for this from Lilac Weather. Again, another one from Lilac Weather. Uh, the Titans deciding that the roaring isn't worth it after witnessing the shit show that is Election Trucker. <laughs> they just cancelled the plot of Deltarune and Umris happens. That's actually the lore. They cancelled all plot progression and left the characters to fester in their relationship dramas. Like Homestuck Act 6. Um, anyway. We have a comic here by Blue NSL, the winner of many speedrun and chess tournaments. 
Uh, another eight dollars from Wilp, so it keeps coming. Thank you, dude. I got a job. I didn't have anything else to spend it on, so I came here and really wanted Mr. Creamer to be included. Was Mr. Creamer ever included after all that? Did Mr. Creamer get in? Oh no, I think it was a spammed in parentheses or a, bra a, a bit. A bit. How do you describe that? One of Spamton's brackets was filled by Mr. Creamer, so I, I guess it did work in the end. Alright, what's this comment got to say? Chris, dear, I think you should stay and talk for a while. I have been meaning to bring this up, but... <laughs> Chris is licking the whipped cream. <laughs> is it alright if Sans is your dad now? Spin? <laughs> Stuff? This is like a whole manga. Uh, or, you know, if that is too much, I could just be the, uh, uh, the whipped cream delivery man. Uh, the splat. Can I, do I have the splat? Let me, let me bring up the splat. I have it somewhere. Uh, okay, project stuff, audio. Um, oh, it's, fuck, it's one of the deltarine sound effects that's prefixed by S and D. It makes it harder. Uh... Oh, it's Cartoon Splat? It says right on the, the thing, I should've just watched. Um, wait. No, it's not actually called that. Fuck, what's the name of the Splat? Yeah, that's not actually the file name. I don't remember what the file name was. Sound Cartoon... No, that's not the file name. Uh... Sound splat. I have all the Delta Rune side effects in a folder here. Just wait, is that it? I saw it. There it is. Incredibly loud. <laughs> it was worth it. It took. It was like a Joel gag. It took 15 minutes to set up, but it was kind of funny. Cringe. It was all worth it for that that last panel. Holy shit! The the tails gets trolled ass looking. That's such a, a unique art style here. It's. It's like Tails gets trolled and Spongebob somehow crossed over. That That's how I describe this art style. Incredibly strange. I, I love it though, thank you. Um, the music ran out. Well, we got one more. It's our Mooks comic. That's right. It's our Mooks banger. Let's end it off with a Mooks banger. It's the last fan art. It's Noel and Chris. What do we do? I've got an idea. So, uh, oh, it's two different scenes. Okay, it, it's it's vignettes. I don't want to be the mayor. Well, uh, but if I'm the mayor, then I I guess I'll be your dad too. <laughs> it's it's what's transpiring. You'll be dead by your stand. <laughs> no else, <else's> T posing. <laughs> I forgot that was I wrote that in. <laughs> uh that that's fucking wonderful. I love it. You'll be dead and by your stun. Uh, are we not going to get a read of today's progress? I guess I could. I mean, I've sort of transcended the point where, like, if I was going to get tired of streaming, I would have already, so I might as well just do it. Uh, $5 from um, Autumn Wolverton. For some reason, I almost read that as Autism Wolverton. I was just going to roll with it, but it is, in fact, Autumn Wolverton. Thank you. Uh, this has been a hell of a ride. I'm proud to have made part of this masterpiece of political drama. Halloween's pedipalps shall be my legacy. I love it. Like every random person in chat is going to have some tiny fragment that they contributed to. That's the beauty of this. Um, the, the licensing will be a nightmare. You will never see a cinematic adaptation, uh, but otherwise it's really cool. Please don't. It's been eight hours. It's been eight hours for me, too. Um, if you don't want to listen, you don't have to. That's how it works, right? I'm going to try to read it. I'm just going to try. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I was calling Asgore Heisenberg canonically. All right, let's... I wrote a lot the stream. Like, I, I was writing like a demon uh, at some points, and I think I was just trying to rush through some parts as well, so I think this is going to be a lot of writing here. Um, it's 58 pages in the end, and of that... Oh my god. 
and was silent ever after. Um, and of that, I wrote, what, 13 and a half pages? That That's like, uh, not quite double the previous streams. It's a lot, though. That's a lot. Um, uh, we don't need background music. It's, I'm just going to be reading anyway. Let's do this. I drank all the tea this stream. That never happens. Fuck bumble background music. That's it's a bit much. How much is this? Oh, let's look at the final word count. Actually, uh, actually, I'm gonna, I'm gonna delete the um the notes to get a more accurate word count here. Uh, R.I.P. to any unused uh, Gaster rap lyrics here. Th they'll be recorded in perpetuity in the uh, the stream footage. Um, how many blank pages are there? Oh, this is some more notes down here. Boom. All right. Pure um, uh, not umris. It's I didn't write umris. I did not write umris. Tell myself in the mirror in the morning. You did not write umris. Um, this is election trucking. So final word count: seventeen thousand four hundred ninety, which is like um, like one and a third umrises. I'd say. Five bucks from 7k, thank you. Glad I could finally get in here on the final installment of the greatest addition to the Western canon in decades. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll take it, I'll take it. What else can I say? Western canon, yeah, AO3, Western canon. That's as long as your master's thesis, says Veritas. Uh, uh, I never even wrote a master's thesis. This is way longer than my capstone paper. I'll say that much. That was like only like 15 pages, I think. Um, actually, I'd, I'd be open to a music suggestion while reading this. It is a bit eerie with no background music. Spring in my step, no. Uh, no one hour spring in my step. That's not allowed. Claire, Claire de Lune, perfect. I'm gonna get probably like copyright struck by some dipshit who thinks that he played it once, but I don't care. Um, I, I wonder if I go for the ultra kill soundtrack version. Surely that's somehow copyright free. I have no idea what recording was used for the Ultra Kill soundtrack. Uh, there's an extended one. Perfect. How loud does it get? Could go up a bit. There we go. One of the most beautiful piano pieces ever made by Claude Debussy himself. Get it here, Omori. Okay. Ultra Kill 1 should be public domain. Hopefully. What happens is that randos sort of claim to have performed it. I don't know how it works. I don't care. Uh, where, where, where do we start? Chris and Noel sat across from each other at a booth in, um, in a booth at the Denny's West of the police station. Chris slip, sipped their chalky milk while Noelle picked at her dino nuggets. Both were reluctant to make eye contact. Another two ninety nine for Wolfsode. Just counted, I donated 126 Australian dollars. That's almost as cool as 126 US dollars, holy shit. Yeah, ridiculous uh, sums of cash expended, as I said. Thank you so much. Uh, alright, alright. Chalky milk. They were reluctant to make eye contact. We need a new plan, Chris said. Noel nodded glumly. I'm sorry, Chris. I really thought Sans Phase 2 would be a hit. Everyone I asked on LiveJournal said there was a lot of shipping potential, she said. Chris shrugged away her apology. They shoveled a massive whipped cream waffle slurry into their mouth and chewed pensively. 
They let their eyes scan across the sparsely populated tables, a golden evening uh, golden evening light spilling through the diner's windows and casting the other patrons in silhouette. Footnote 10. Translator's note. Silhouette is English for Umaris. A giant monochrome eyeball sitting in the far corner briefly made eye contact before glancing awkwardly away, embarrassed by his own prejudice. <laughs> Ever since Asgore's speech earlier that day, Chris had noticed more and more monsters giving them a similar look. They absentmindedly fished out their pocket knife and twirled it between their fingers like an anime protagonist. Noel looked visibly uncomfortable. Uh, um, Chris, I think they'll kick us out of the Denny's if they see your knife. The knife abruptly halted its circuit through Chris's fingers, but Noelle instead found her eyes drawn upward toward the slasher grin spreading across the human's face. I thought of a new plan, they said. Uh, what? Noelle stammered. But, but Chris, the cutout broke. The whole town is polarized. The only way Sans could win now would be to create votes out of thin air. Chris continued to smile and flicked open the knife. Noelle jumped slightly despite herself. Without further explanation, Chris slowly lifted the blade across the table and held it delicately over Noelle's nuggies. Uh, Chris? She squeaked. Suddenly, with the precision of a surgeon, footnote 11, who was also an anime protagonist, Chris thrust the knife downward and embedded its very tip into the crispy shell of a dino nugget. As they withdrew the blade, a minuscule trickle of inky black smoke leaped from the incision. Noelle's eyes widened. How did you do that? She whispered. Chris shrugged. I saw it on X. Caliban Holiday sat slumped in her living room couch, staring blearily eyed at her laptop. One of her tentacles was coiled loosely around a decanter of Shiva. With a flick of her wingtip, she slammed the monitor closed in, dis uh, in disgust. I'm having trouble reading here. It's been a long stream. The projections were a toss up. Nothing left to do um, but wait for tomorrow. On the floor beside her, Nerdly sat hugging his legs to his chest and weeping uncontrollably. He couldn't believe it. His life's work, the dream of downtime revitalization and upzoning funded by an increase in sales tax, was over. I'm sorry, mommy, he whispered. Halloween's neck extended across the room and stared deeply into his eyes. Nerdly, she mumbled. You're like the daughter I never had. She then kissed him on the forehead. Quick, Heisenberg! Uh, Mr. White, there's still time for an interview! I knew Joe Rogan in kindergarten. We can fix this! Asgore pinched the bridge of his nose, trying to tune out the screaming homunculus sitting across from him and focus on the newspaper crossword puzzle he'd started that morning. They were sitting in a booth at the other Denny's, across the street from the one west of the police station. I said, holy shit, Cherry uh, PG, $66.69. The basest donation I have perhaps ever seen. Wow, thank you so much. That's that's nuts. This one's for chat. Shoutouts to chat. Round of clapter for chat. I'm clapping right now, but the, the noise suppression is editing it out, probably. Thank you so much uh, for that one, Cherry PG. Th that's awesome. <laughs> All right. Uh I gotta read though. We gotta finish this. We gotta read. Um. Spaddington, we have been over this. I just don't see the cause for concern here. I know this circus! Nose Nuzzle, Nose Nuzzle Champ 98. You need to you haul your ass in front of a camera now and make sure the powers that be understand that you're not gay. But Asgore looked confused. I've been dating nothing but men since my divorce. Allegedly! Asgore sighed and went back to filling in his crossword. Um, so Chris, is there a, a certain one you need for the plan? Noelle's neck was beginning to cramp from looking over Chris's shoulder as they rifled through drawer after drawer of rainbow anodized balisong knives stuffed under their bed. Several in a previous collection were proudly labeled as Scandium Alloy. A, a two-pronged karambit flashed by with moisture engraved in the handle for some reason. Um, Noel giggled awkwardly. Uh, uh, why, why does that one say? Middle name, Chris grunted, completely wrapped in their search. Finally, after it seemed every nook and cranny was exhausted, their hands snapped around the handle of one specimen like a bear trap. I'll say a particular, it's better. They withdrew a translucent, yellowish kitchen knife that emitted a faint scent of lime jello. Hey, did you watch that tutorial from Untranslatable Japanese Idiom 2? Noel said with sudden enthusiasm. 
I've been a subscriber for years now. I think he peeked with the smoke knife, though. Chris nodded. Why that one, though? Noelle asked. Chris stood up abruptly and began walking to the bathroom. Uh, the bathroom door. No, the bedroom door. Sentimental value, they said. Noel took the hint and scurried through the door after Chris, being careful not to let her hooves clop too loudly against the hardwood. Chris had assured her that Toriel would be sleeping like a rock at this hour, but she didn't want to take any chances. The, this plan was their last chance. The pair rounded a corner at the base of a dark stairwell. The dark stairwell. Chris glanced left and right. After a moment, they gave a nod. The coast was clear. They crept through the kitchen, past the dust-caked Skylanders figurines lining the windowsills. They came to the threshold of the living room. The TV sat dark and silent as ever, the divots from Sans and Toriel's ass cheeks still deeply imprinted into the couch. This gave Noelle a troubling mental image, and she turned back to the door, where Toriel dropped from the ceiling, impacting the ground with a thud that shook the house to its foundations, and threw up a... There we go. That shook the house to its foundations and threw up a shockwave of dust and shed hair from the carpet. Noelle immediately doubled over in an intense sneezing fit. Greetings, have you two been having a nice sleepover? She said in perfect deadpan. Chris said nothing. Noelle watched from the carpet through streaming eyes as they squared off against their mother. I need to post the fic while the stream is still going? It's one of the moments of all time? Uh, you don't understand, dude. Like, porting, it's, it's not just posting it on AO3. You have to port it to AO3. Like, all of the, the texts, all the different fonts, all of the bolds and italics has to be turned to, like, fucking HTML, from what I remembered. It's, like, a huge, ridiculous pain in the ass, and it'll take, like, a, a while. Like, I won't even do it today or probably even this week. I'll be busy. <laughs> Put it that way. But eventually. Anyway. Back to it. Go back to bed, my child, she said, voice soft and dripping with cold authority. You will catch a cold wandering around at night. Don't do this, Mom, Chris said, almost too quietly to hear. Do not be cheeky with me, Chris. I know what you intend to do. I cannot allow it. It has to be this way, Chris drawled, and slowly leveled their knife toward Toriel's chest. Toriel lowered her head sadly. I know what will happen if you leave. I have heard the story time and time again. They toke. They go broke. They croak. With that, she raised her arms and became enwreathed in swirling gouts of flame. Chris and Noel stared in silence for several seconds. The ceiling began to char. Eventually, Sands, who had been boiling water to make craft dinner in the kitchen the whole time, called out to the living room. Uh, sorry to interrupt, Toriel. What did you just say? Toriel deactivated the pillar of flame. What do you mean? She called back. The, uh, smoke token croak thing. Uh, literally, what even was that? Toriel looked sheepish. It is from your brother's sermon yesterday. I thought it was a powerful encapsulation of the vicious cycle of addiction, is it not? Sands audibly face pawned from the other room. That's really cringe, Mom, Chris said. Noel, having recovered from the allergic fit, the allergenic fit, chimed in from the floor. We're not actually going to buy drugs, Miss Dreamer, if that was the issue. All aggression instantly drained from Toriel's posture. Oh, oh, I see, she stammered. Ah, I, I did not realize you were not going to smoke heroin in the woods. I suppose in that case it would not be such a big problem. Yeah, Chris said. We were just going to rig the election so Sans wins. Uh, all right then, said Toriel beaming. Have fun. Please try to please try to do a better job than I did back during Watergate. Um, yeah, thanks, squeaked Noelle as she peeled herself off the carpet and followed Chris through the front door. Would you like a Claritin before you go, Toriel asked. I, I'm fine, thanks, Noelle said, and scurried across the threshold. Chris slammed the door behind them. Close call, they said. The pair turned to walk down the driveway, where Sands dropped from the sky, landing with a thud that sprayed Kraft dinner in a wide arc from the pot still clutched in his hand. Hey, uh, so, uh, Chris. His eyes flashed toward Noel. And, um, uh, Freezer Girl. Uh, ice to meet you, yada yada. Did you just say something about making me win the election? Did you teleport, Chris asked? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna rig the election. Huh. Uh, to tell you the truth, I was kind of hoping I misheard you. There, because uh, in that case, we're going to have a problem. Megalovania from Undertale started playing from Sans' pocket. Oh shit, uh, I mean, shoot, uh, ringtone, sorry. He fumbled with his phone until the music stopped. As I was saying, uh, you know me, Chris. I have my shop, I watch TV with your mom, I get home every day at 8pm with the latest. I don't smoke, but I occasionally huff glue. 
I just want a quiet life, really. I know we don't always get along, but you can respect that, right? Quoting anime won't make you my dad's sense, Chris said. Wow, that's rough. The three stood in weird silence for a moment. Eventually, something seemed to dawn on Sans. Uh, okay, Chris. Can you make me a promise? If I let you win me the election and stop your uh, other dad from leading the town into a dystopian regime of self-perpetuating racial violence, then can I be your dad? Chris stood and moving for a long while. Finally, they spoke. You'll be dead at what you stand. Hey, nice Undertale reference. Yeah, my brother made that game. Sans, unsure how to respond, looked back to Noelle, who snapped out of her tea pose a few frames after entering his field of view. She smiled helplessly. Uh, uh, if it makes you feel any better, Mr. Uh... Delta Rune. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, you can always appoint a vice mayor and resign after one day of work. That's what my mom used to do when she wanted to go, uh, wanted to sherm off to go on wine tours. Uh, yeah, sounds good, actually. All right, see you guys. He walked back inside, and Chris and Noel immediately heard Toriel yelling at him for leaving the stove on. Oh, it's a capital D? <laughs> True. Good catch. Good catch. All right, that was the, the scene that never ended there. Election day. Napstablick drifted down the hometown sidewalk in the mid-morning light. In the mid-morning light with the fire in our hearts. We had something to something that fallen lands with the, uh, I forget. Sorry about that. In a, latch uh, in a last ditch effort to decrease the voter turnout, Mayor Holiday had designated the abandoned fallout bunker at the edge of town as the single valid voting location. Napstablick sighed. On one hand, the move struck them as a blatant misuse of authority to subvert the very foundations of the democratic process had, that had elevated her to power in the first place. But on the other hand, they didn't have hands, so they guessed it might as well be they might as well vote anyway. Uh, the dew clung to their dangling ectoplasmic ghost fringes as they floated down the path into the woods. The road wasn't even paved, and they noted the lack of wet floor signs as a potential health and safety hazard. Unfortunately, they weren't on duty that day, and so were helpless to do anything about it. Uh, yes, I will play Spring in my step. While reading the descriptions. At last, they reached the double doors, now propped open for the first time in decades, flaking with thick sheets of rust. It was very, very dark inside. Probably yet another ploy to discourage voters from altering the status quo. Napstablick tried to shrug, but lacked shoulders, and so instead simply drifted through into the space beyond, and fell for several minutes, bef several minutes before landing harmlessly atop of heap of moaning bodies. <laughs> Looking around, they spotted what looked like uh, many of hometown's residents, but wearing some sort of outlandish cosplay. Um, hang on, Mr. Bussy. We, we, we played about a third of the one hour long uh, Spring on My Step video, by the way. That's fucked up. I, I'm sorry for that chat. Alright. Alphys was in a grey body paint and had two reddish horns curling from her head. Jerry and Jeff from the popular... Um, Jerry was Jeff from the popular Japanese role-playing game Mother 2. The funny cowboy hat mouse thing from QC's was Gangster Spongebob. The three three froggets were wearing fedoras and holding Tommy guns, which Napsablick thought was probably against the law. The warrior was an anthropomorphic floating pizza. Th this is foreshadowing, by the way. Napsablick eventually guns all of them down in the street. Pizza Pants had become an identical version of himself, wearing a McDonald's uniform. Nerdly had become Des Holiday. He had also, in an unrelated turn of events, changed his legal name to December the earlier, uh, that, earlier that day. Uh, Gaster was Jesus Radiation Christ. Alvin had become Oberon Smog and was attempting to hide behind any nearby ballot boxes before anyone saw him. Undone was a pile of smoldering ashes. Toriel, standing over the pile of ashes, visibly distraught, and wearing a large purple muumuu with the Delta Rune stitched onto the front. Husey was a monochromatic human wearing a pinstripe baseball jersey and a cap. Temi had become Special Enemy Temi, wearing full medieval armor and holding a diploma for a bachelor's degree in environmental science. Rudy was in ninja costume, and was cured of leukemia. <laughs> you missed this entire segment and you're mad? Don't be mad, this sucked. Runzel was a lanky skeleton wearing some sort of plastic armor and red spandex tights. Monster MK Kid, 
who could not legally vote, was Miles Tails Prower from the hit webcomic Tails Gets Trolled. Their cousin was a garish pink black robot with white face paint and distractingly long legs. Their cousin, Grumpy, had become an anime cat girl for some reason. Caddy, who could not legally vote, was nonetheless there, and had become a human with long ebony black hair and purple streaks and red tips that reached her mid-back and icy blue eyes like limpid tears, and a lot of people told her she looked like Amy Lee. <gasps> Jockington, who could not legally vote, was nonetheless there, and in a 20-foot-tall mech suit, Halloween Holiday was some sort of anthropomorphic reindeer who looked faintly like Margaret Thatcher. Cut the music. Oh! <laughs> okay, that was good. Uh, I, I, I have to continue the bit. Uh, I, I made an inconsistent uh, a bit error here. Okay. We're out. Napstablook, with some disappointment, noted that their form had remained unchanged, which probably meant they'd missed a memo. Aside from that, the voting facility appeared to have been transported into an undulating purplish void, the only ground beneath them a plain of smooth grey rock stretching out into the misty distance. Far on the horizon, silhouettes, footnote 12, Translator's note, the word silhouette derives from the late 18th century French politician Etienne de Silhouette, whose last name was French for Umris. Um, the silhouettes of immense multi-eyed beasts loomed over the proceedings like celestial bodies. There were, however, still a row of ballot boxes set up, so Napstablick figured things were under control. They quickly drifted over to cast a vote before anyone could notice they weren't in costume, but quickly butted up against the back of um, another one of the ballot boxes that had shifted over while they weren't looking. Hey, bub, it said brusquely. Lion's dots here. An extremely muscular arm rose out of the box and gestured at the um, gestured back at what Napstablook had taken for a long row of voting stations. Under greater scrutiny, they could see its members swaying back and forth as they waited, supported by similarly well-developed human legs. Oh, um, sorry. I thought you were a ballot box. Haha, <laughs> sorry. We're ballet boxes, numbskull. Ain't you ever seen a dark nerd before? Ballot boxes this down air at the end. Oh, Napstablet groaned forlornly. Maybe they didn't believe in democracy strongly enough to vote today after all. Uh, actually, that's okay. I didn't want to vote anyway. Eh, don't bother, the ballot box grumbled. It's looking like a sand sweep. Lucky for us, that kid dropped in earlier. Warned us about those two's anti-darkner agenda. Asymmetric taxes, workplace discrimination, segregated bathroom, the wikes. Ah, uh, that, that's, uh, well, well, never mind. Have fun voting, I guess. Uh, it's funnier if it's asymmetric tax policy. I don't even know if that makes sense. It just sounds right. Napstablick drifted back toward the throng of sprawled cosplayers, looking for a way out. On the way back, they passed Asgore, and I dressed in a flowing purple robe and flowing purple robes were burnished armor, who was loudly complaining to the mayor's secretary about his ballot being spoiled. See here now, the candidate's name is misspelled S A and S Sands, clearly as day. As mayoral candidate, I pride myself in having a strong grasp on my opposition at all times. How can you suggest that I don't know how to spell the name of my own- Sucks to be him, Napstablick thought, and hovered past without making eye contact. Uh, this was easy, since the secretary did not have eyes. They did wonder briefly why Asgore was carrying a Samsung smart toaster with one Spamton nose-length uh, knife stuck through it under his arm, but it wasn't- Oh my god, okay, that sentence has to be uh, gone over, I think. They did briefly wonder why Asgore was carrying a Samsung smart toaster with a one Spamton nose-long knife stuck through it under his arm, but wasn't remotely tempted to ask. After looking around for a while, they, they couldn't see any exit sign in sight, and so opted to go with their standard tactic of levitating slowly upward until they escaped the current social impasse. Surprisingly, this worked, and they popped back out of the void in front of the bunker doors. They then went, they then went back home and watched Storage Wars. The following week, Asgore sat on the lake shore with his feet in the water and stared into the steely depths. Stans had won the election by a landslide after the revelation of an entire heretofore unknown voting populace that still somehow turned out to count as citizens of hometown under Vermont law. 
Spamton, having immediately jumped ship to work as Sands as vice mayor after the events of the election day, had been summarily reassigned to the role of assistant janitor in Sands' convenience store. He manned the, the till there most days while Sands filed paperwork and meticulously forgot to ever email Asgore eviction notices. Is this on AO3? Not yet. One day. Halloween had, within three days of losing her position as mayor, um, oh, Halloween, within three days of losing her position as mayor, was elected MP of Montreal, where she re uh, represented the Bloc Québécois party. Footnote 13. Uh, Vermont having been annexed by Quebec shortly following its schism from Canada in the 1990X Stanley Cup riots. Yes. She forgot to buy enough plane tickets for both Noel and Des uh, before leaving, forcing Noel to move in with her father at the hospital. The following collapse of Honduras catalyzed by Asgore's electoral failure. Oh, following the collapse of Honduras catalyzed by Asgore's electoral failure, the fledging communist regime drafted, drafted Gaster as their official state rapper, which was cool. After thinking through all these events sequentially, with the best grammar he could muster, Asgore cast his eyes down to the Samsung dumb toaster in his lap which was not in any way inhabited by the soul or consciousness of Spamton, but nonetheless held a strong metaphorical association with him in Asgore's mind. He clenched his teeth and lobbed the appliance as far as he could into the lake, where it quick was quickly swallowed by the slightly oil-slicked water. I'm still live. Record-breaking stream length, maybe? I went for nine hours before. This is nine hours currently. Asgore sat in pensive silence for a good while longer, but eventually the sky began to lose its light, and he climbed to his feet to leave. But before he could turn... Nice toaster there, buddy! Don't you know it's illegal to dump here, you hear? Asgore's pupils dilated. Around the place the toaster sunk into the lake was now protruding a semicircle of pale tentacles. They towered over the water like ghosts. Slowly, a dark shape. Footnote 14. Translator's note, it is unknown if there is any direct translation, German translation for the term dark shape uh, formed between them, becoming clearer as the mass approached the shore. Finally, the amorphous shape of Onionsan emerged to face Asgore. You know, Asgore, when all this started, I just wanted to protect my home, you hear? You can understand that, you hear? It's the same reason you ran for mayor, after all. Asgore's jaw hung slack. All the energy seemed to seep from his limbs. He didn't understand. It's hard, you know, living in a town where no one knows your name because you live underwater, and no one cares if your home is getting fracked by ExxonMobil because, well, they can't see it because it's underwater, you hear? I just thought if that anyone else was in power, maybe things would be different, you hear? I couldn't, it wouldn't matter if they weren't good at mayoring, just as long as they weren't her, you hear? Asgore finally felt the modicum of sense return to him. It was you, he mumbled. On the phone? Under Onion San shouted back. Yep, that was me. It's not illegal or nothing. I asked my sea lawyer, you hear? B -b but your voice, Asgore stammered. Don't you recognize Microsoft Sam? Just like that one Deltarune YouTuber, you hear? No reply. I gotta say though, Asgore, one thing I didn't expect with you on the job was a dismembered human corpse landing on my head at 4am, you hear? The they briefly trailed off into a thousand yard stare before immediately recovering. But, but that's my fault too, you hear? Sp that Spamton guy I met when I looked for the song at the bottom of the lake, you hear? I knew he was bad news, but I did it anyway, you hear? I guess I didn't see any other way out, you hear? I feel like there's too many you hears. There we go. I think this actually, it's, it's better. Now put it back. He paused. Anyway, I guess I just thought you should know, you hear? And also, he dropped this. One last tentacle emerged from the lake, carrying with it the sodden remains of Asgore's Samsung dumb toaster. Wordlessly, the, trendle, the tendril unfurled and placed the toaster back into Asgore's arms. Seems like things worked out okay in the end. 
but you're gonna carry that weight, you hear? With that, he disappeared back into, uh, beneath the darkening waves. And from that day forward, Asgore swore to devote himself to the cause of anarcho-communism. He was tragically assassinated by the CIA 20 years later. Okay, post credit scene. I need to get a few voice actors to do the proper reading. Uh, implying that me making noises isn't good enough. Excuse me, princess. I'm it's I'm sorry I'm not the um the Shadow of Roseraid Umris strip club edit over here. Um Onion San is a they? Did I did I do the wrong pronoun where? Oh yeah. Oops. Good catch. Later that night, in the Denny's west of the police station, the plate of dino nuggets that had been left uncleared after the restaurant's de declaration of bankruptcy and immediate abandonment three minutes after Chris and Noel had finished their meal finally leaked enough darkness to reach a ludonarratively significant mass. Um, the now irrevocably soggy outer shell of the nuggies bubbled and churned as the deceased chicken tissue was flooded with determination and or darkness. From the churning uh, mass of meat and breading rode a f rose a fluffy black creature wearing a green hat and robe. Um. Who definitely didn't have any relation to Asriel. The residual soul power residing in the chicken was, apparently, enough to facilitate the being's immediate reincarnation into a lightener. The creature turned to face the camera. Haha, <laughs> I'm Ralsei. We sure had a lot of fun today, but in the real world, reactionary politics, opium addiction, and voter fraud are no laughing matter. Meter. So I'm here to impart a very important lesson about the critical enjoyment of problematic fiction. The window behind Ralsei was suddenly shattered by a hail of gunfire, throwing him to the greasy restaurant floor. On the street outside, Comstable Napstablook sustained fire from two carfuls of frogget mafiosos while returning fire with their service weapon. They felt no need to die for cover as the bullets didn't actually interact with their incorporeal body. After months pursuing dead-end lead after dead-end lead, Napstablook had finally made their big bust after witnessing 50 kilo bales of raw heroin being loaded into the back of a civilian's car directly outside the police station window. Luckily, they had looked up from their Mythbusters reruns at just the right moment to witness the deal. Several minutes later, once the dust of all seven froggets had scattered to the wind, Naptablik hovered toward the civilian car. Curled in the driver's seat was Pizza Pants. Over the subsequent weeks of court hearings, it was revealed that Pizza Pants, whose legal name was in fact Opioids Opioid Pants Jorg, had the town's um, had been the sound's uh, try again had been the town's sole consumer of illicit drugs, all along. All along, with the minor exception of Harold, who was medically allowed to smoke weed as a painkiller for his war injury. Having gained a six-figure per month passive income from fortuitous early investment in Bitcoin, Opioid Pants had single-handedly funded an entire branch of the Froggett Mafia's drug trafficking operation, leaving exactly zero dollars left to pay rent and necessitating him working a dead-end job at the local Icy's Pizza. He was sentenced to five years in federal prison. Terry's mansion was raided days later following statements by Asgore Dreamer to the police, but no evidence was ultimately found of wrongdoing. As it turned out, he just really respected drug dealers. Somewhere in the back of the courtroom, Birdly explained the intricacies of the legal process to Susie while occasionally attempting to grope her breasts. Bah. We did it. It's the end of the stream. And that's politics. That's politics, all right. Yeah. Uh, was what? Wait, remnant. Was the opioid crisis your suggestion? That's that. That ended up being a, a huge plot point for some reason. I didn't realize that was you way back then. Breasts is no longer the last word. It. it this doesn't count. This is um. It's a uh, exodiagetic. Chris voice is the same as Sans? It's not. It's really it's it's very different, I promise. My my Sans voice was shit today. I, I kinda forgot how to do it. 
Um, yeah, great work, everyone. <laughs> what else is there to say? Uh, I'm going to go and, like, eat, maybe. I'm so tired. My eyeballs feel like they're vibrating. Um, I, I don't know how this subathon streamers do it. I, I don't know how that works. How the fuck do they do that? Everyone go practice self-care immediately. <laughs> go drink some almond milk and have a bath while listening to... Uh, I guess WC is pretty good. Okay, goodbye everyone. And uh, that truly was the election trucking of all time. Oh wait, last minute $20 donation by a cat called Thunders. Don't want to miss that. Thank you, thank you. Uh, this was a wild ride. I'm so proud to have contributed to the end of this, and now I'm a dedicated stream viewer for the foreseeable future. Fuck yeah. I'm also watching your Earthbound streams, and it's trippy because my name is Ness. Your actual name is- wait, it's, hang on, the stream has come back to life. Your actual legal name is Ness. How does that actually happen? Were, were your parents Earthbound fans? Or is that just like a different language has, has a name like that? That's common. I have to know. Maybe we'll never know. There's a few Nesses out there. Fucking crazy. The extended uh, Claire de Lune ended. Alright, stream's actually over this time. Goodbye.